Uh, I'm working from, I'm going to start off on 179 and I'll just tell you the numbers as I go along because I'm going to put them all together and come up with something. All right. Different. Different. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to mute you guys just so it doesn't, so the picture doesn't jump around and then, um, but you feel free to ask questions. Okay. No, I mean, it doesn't mean you can't ask questions. It's just, it gets rid of a lot of the background noise. That's all. All right. And then I got to remember to unmute myself. All right. There we go. Now, I'm looking at 179 first. Rob, I don't see a number on these photos. Huh. Uh, yeah, I don't have a number either. I just have the photos. Yeah. Oh, you don't? Which, uh -uh. so which well, in the oh, sequence? Oh, this is easy. This, I got it. This one's really easy. It's the one with the poppy fields. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there's uh, poppies in them. A lot of poppies. <laughs> is there orange? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a little bit of orange. Well, there's a whole lot. Um, there's mountains way off in the background. Way, 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 way off. There's a little road. It's you the don't first have a number attachment. On. It's the first attachment on the Yeah, it's team. the first one. Oh, okay. Easy. The, the very first one, and there are people. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and, and poppies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that one. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, that's 179, huh? It's easy. Forget about it. Okay. Thanks. All right, so what do we do here? Let's, um, um, I've already decided I want a, a horizontal composition, so I think that's, I'm not gonna go with a vertical. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and Give myself a few, and these are just thumbnail sketches. If you if you can see how big big that is, it's very 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 small, and this is really just for placement. But uh, I think I want those mountains way off in the background, and I may take them out later. Who knows? But it is it's it's amazing when you get on the other side of the mountains how flat everything is. So uh, we get we get another little mountain range in front of that. Can you pull your um, paper down, please? Down? Move it. Yeah, well, there you go. Okay. It's perfect. Yeah. Thanks. I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't get up. I can't zoom in anymore, but that's okay. Uh, okay, now on top of that, we have, we have little grasslands and things. And then I'm going to go forward to another one here. I'm thinking I'm going to go to one of the other ones, like well, let's just go to the second one. Uh, uh, I see 167 on mine. And okay. Sorry technical stuff. Okay. Now I'm thinking, uh, I have some little mountains way off into the distance over here. No big deal, but I want to just lift this side up a little touch. We have a little foreground hill right there. A little foreground hill. And this will make a lot more sense. If you can't see exactly what I'm doing, just, just hang in there. Hang in there. And And then I, yeah, I do like on the first one, those sort of meandering paths and roads and things way off. I do see kind of a road way off. And I want to just mention that right in here. I'm just going to put that in relatively dark so I can just see it way off. Maybe even throw in a couple of telephone poles just to create a little bit of depth. But I'm not sure I want to put them in. I mean, it's up to you. I don't know. Maybe not. I'll just leave them out for now. And then what we have are all these patterns created by the poppies. So I'm going to move forward here a little bit. And you can, you know, construct yours any way you like. 
Um, I have some where the poppies are really up close and you can see them and you're looking right down on them. Um, others where they're pretty far away. But I'm looking at 180 right now. Um, you have some really interesting little passageways through the poppies. I mean, it's, it's very orange. You know, and by the way, I might even want to put 180 off to the side. Just letting myself know. Um, what numbers I'm using there. And then some little passageways. If you'll look, you might even see kind of like a, a, a C, a letter C or a letter S in those, in those little passageways. They think of them as paths. Uh, really what they are is they're just, you know, where it's more green and you don't see as much um, poppy. I guess that would be orange, wouldn't it? <laughs> and uh, so little passageways, and they're making little kind of neander, neandering little shapes. Something like that in there. And it's, you know, this, this can be reworked mostly I'm just noticing that I have these beautiful little shapes up here in the foreground. That's all. And that's a lot already. I might even want to uh, throw in a few clouds. So something like that up there. Uh, I think they're a little confusing. Maybe very light clouds. Yeah, if you notice on that first one, the, the mountains were really, really light and really far away because of all, they're so far away. I mean, you're probably looking at 40, 50 miles. Oh, yeah, easy. So you're going to get that. But already, of course, we've already made probably 50% of our decisions. I mean, just putting things where you want them is a big deal. And what you shouldn't do is just start off. Um, painting and just throw things around the place and see what you come up with. Now, that's something you might want to do when maybe you're a little bit more advanced or you're comfortable with the subject and you've done this kind of thing before, or um, maybe you just felt like flying by the seat of your pants on this one. But I'm talking about when you're trying to make more of a, a worked out composition, this is, a, this is the way to go. We've already made a lot of decisions here. So a good thumbnail sketch is the way to start off. We'll just call that the thumbnail. And then um, I'm going to shoot this out a little bit. Let's see. Yeah. Put that up a little higher. And I'll do a value rough over here to the side. Maybe. Maybe I'll make it a little, little wider over this way. And I didn't start off with my rule of thirds, did I? Totally okay. If you want to break this into thirds, just lightly. <clears throat> Now, you don't have to put in all of these lines if, if you don't like. Um, oftentimes, I don't put in all the lines. I think for some of you that have had this, I think I just went over this for my Monday class. Some of you take that too. I'm looking for my gummy eraser. There it is. Okay. What you can do is, Watch, I'll just take these out. Here's what I usually do. When I'm out and about and I'm making just quick sketches, I don't always draw out all these lines. I usually just kind of eyeball. There's a about here, there, there, and there, something like that. They're not perfect, but 
what you're looking for is something that just takes you out of the center. That's all. So you don't put your, you know, you don't put your mountain right above the center, you know, and your, your pathway right in the middle, you know, and you think you won't do it. It happens to everybody. I'm telling you, it happens to everybody. I do it all the time. And I just laugh. I do it right in the middle of the demo. So you guys have probably seen me do it. I'm here teaching you guys and I'm here doing it myself. So anyway, start off with something like that. I can still see those little blips right there and that's good enough for me. Okay. Now, so around here was the third. And, and just so I don't put my main like landline, you know, the, the sort of, um, I'll go back to 179 here. There it is. Now that, now, when I took the photograph, I'm looking at it. Wow, I have the I have it right in the center. So I'm going to move it up. Uh, not quite on the third there, but I, I do want those mountains off in the background. I think I'm going to make them a little bit bigger than they are. I think those are the uh, San Gregorio Mountains. Big bear from behind over there. And then... Something like that. And then I had another little hill in front of it. And I think, yeah, I'm gonna flatten that out a little bit more like that. So my main line is right on that, right on the third, if the third is here, I have it right up there. So it's keeping me out of putting that main line right on the center which I'll do. And then I liked a little, another little hill off to the side over here. And I was doing this one just, just to add another little foreground element. I took it from another picture. I'm, I'm pretty much just making it up. like that give it a bottom but still pretty far away and then right way way in the back on the 179 i'm looking i'm seeing some little trees and things way off here so i'm going to just mention i have a a few little tree things happening way off over here, way back there. And out of that sort of comes this, we sort of have this, uh, like the letter C, I'm seeing a road there. And I'm not sure I want to put all the little motor homes and, uh, what do you call them? cars, et cetera, on there. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see a little pathway through there. And maybe, maybe we will add a couple, maybe telephone poles or something. I don't know. I don't want it to be a major deal though. Just some sort of uh, you know, paths and roads and things like that can really pull you off. I know in that picture you might see another road way off over here, and I think I'll leave that one out. But I do see the, the poppies giving us a little bit of a hill overlapping that uh, road, and I like that. And this is what you do. You just go through the things, and you make your choices. Your choices will be different than mine, and that's fine. It just means, you know, I'm right and you're wrong, and that's how it is. No, I'm just joking. No. I know you're laughing. I can't hear you, but I know you're laughing. No. Okay. So uh, I'm going to... I'm going to throw in a couple of little switchbacks. That's all I'm looking for here is just little zigzaggy switchback things. These just represent uh, sort of the lay of the land and the way I want my poppies to lay down. And you can use some of the other photos in any way you like. I'm going to go up here to um, 134 looks good. 
So does 180. 180, 180 looks really good. Um, I'm seeing um, just little zigzags of row of uh, flowers. Now, what's happening is the ones you when you look down here at the bottom, you're looking way down on them, and that's when they'll separate. You may actually even see one all by itself. Very, very rarely, though, will you ever see one all by itself. And that's what you have to know about painting these fields. If you go painting each one, not only will you be here all day, but it won't look right. You've got to paint clumps, clumps and clumps and clumps. Now, as you're looking at these uh, poppies going off into the distance, they're overlapping each other more and more and more and more and more. So up in the foreground, you may get something, you know, you may get some clumps and occasionally one by itself, something like that. But, and I don't even know if you can see that, that's okay. We'll take care of that in the finish. But mainly, as you get, let's say, uh, 20, 30 feet away, you don't see any individual flowers anymore. It's really just laying down into clumps, clumps and clumps of flowers. And that's what makes them look, I mean, when you're standing in the poppy fields and you look straight down, it's not really a big deal, but you look across them all and you just see millions and millions of them overlapping each other. That's what creates that carpet, sort of a carpet look of, let me go to another one here. Yeah, the 134 I'm looking at right now. Um, it's got the it's got one little bush off to the right side, but other than that, it's all orange poppies. It's probably the most orange one there, um, and that's really good for doing some of the background hills as well. Uh, Wow, that would be really good for doing this painting. Maybe I'll add some more. See, you don't have to go by one photo. I hardly ever use one photo. And I do a lot of just improvising, um, using lots of different things. Even, even that little bush off to the right side could really work for you. Kind of add it's a little space for your eye to rest on, possibly. All right, so we have some nice little zigzaggy areas. And and so from here, what I'll do is, let's go back to 179, that's the beginning here. The, the, the blue sky is very light blue. I, I may make mine a little bit darker. We'll see. And I did make my, my uh, mountains quite a bit bigger than what's in the photo. And that's just fine. It just looks like cropped into it more. I'm using my side of my pen, so I'm just getting a little bit of a value on the. Rob, did you do these photographs this year or from in the past? No, these are like 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah, because this year wasn't very good. All right. Yeah. And this is what, Antelope Valley or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. That year was great. Yeah, yeah. It, it was one of the best years ever. Uh, I had this gentleman come up to me. I, I, he said, I'm 87 years old. And let me tell you, I've been coming out here every year since I was a kid. He goes, it's never been this good. So cool. Yeah, I remember he said that. I, I felt so privileged. Yeah, I, I, I came across these photos and I thought, well, I was actually, well, Renee just went out to the poppy fields and got me thinking about them. She went out there with a friend the other day. Oh, oh, my, I mean, just the two of them. I thought there was. They're very empty right now. <laughs> Yeah, I went, I went to. There was literally nobody, and it was extremely windy, and she didn't have a great time. <laughs> but there's a ton of grasshoppers right now, though. They're really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Did you go? Yeah, I went uh, like a oh. week and a half ago. Dang it! You should have went with them. You would have had fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they, and then they showed me which way they went, and it's not the right way. You, she, they weren't going on the regular free. They went way up to five, and then took like Bouquet Canyon. I'm oh like, yeah, that's, went, a, that's the way I went too. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really pretty. Fun drive. Yeah, it is a beautiful drive. I just thought maybe a little bit 
I mean, she's not really used to driving mountain roads, but uh, I see. She goes, Dad, I had no problems at all. And I said, okay, well, good enough for me. So anyway, <laughs> good to hear you about there, uh, Miles. I didn't know you. Yeah, let's go. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, darken in my mountains a little bit and try not to make them too dark. They're really far away. I'm even seeing a little bit of snow on them. I don't know if you guys can see that, but so we might even put something like that. I don't know. We'll see. I don't want to make them the star of the show or anything. So I might even like lighten up this line back here a little bit too. Just, just a little mention. In fact, if you have to look really hard to see those mountains. So it's really up to you how much you want to emphasize them. I'm just going to go ahead and get this foreground hill here too. Again, I, I don't want to make it too dark. Just darker than the mountain behind it. Just a little bit darker. You can always come back and darken it. There we go. And then I put another hill over here. And you know, I'm not even sure I need it, but I'm, I just wanted to try it. And it's a little bit darker than this foreground hill. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it throw it in with this side, just a little bit darker there. And then, I mean, I can't even see the road way back here. I'm just seeing little nuances. But I think I want to emphasize the fact that the uh, poppies are a little bit lighter than the grass. So I think in my comp here, I'm just going to just going to leave little white areas for the for the poppies. And this just sort of neander your strokes. Back and forth in this pattern, in this sort of pattern like this. Sort of zigzaggy. Some people like to see the letter Z, that helps. Or S, like Superman. Or maybe um, or maybe a C. Any one of those. Just just if you if you think in the terms of those patterns, you'll you'll get because that is what happens when um, vegetation lays down. I'm just going to see a couple little passageways through here. I really like that. Whoops. I really like that uh, 180, I think it was. The one, no, wait, one, 134, that's what it was. Wow, that thing is orange. Yeah, and you can see how much darker the greenery is. compared to the uh, orange. The orangery, <laughs> sorry. Oh boy. They don't, see, they have a greenery word. They don't have a, they don't have an orangery word. Orangey? Orangey probably, huh? Yeah. Don't you like it when I like to figure out the English language right on camera here? I don't know. Okay. Little what's, passageways. What's French for orange? Isn't it orange, orangerie? Orange. 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 Okay. And I think in German it's oranga. Really? I think oranga. That, that kind of sounds right. I forgot. I know green is balloon. I used to know that stuff. It's been so many years. All right, so we have some zigzaggy patterns. And the main thing with your zigzaggy patterns here is that um, your, let me just draw this a little larger right here. As your patterns go farther away, they're really close together like this. Okay, and then as they come forward, they get bigger 
and bigger and bigger. It's perspective. It's uh, it's ba it's your basic perspective. It's it's this kind of thing. So you'll have patterns that start off a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and bigger, right? And and then as things go back in space, they appear smaller. That's all it is. See, there's perspective in everything. Everything. If you can see it, there's perspective in it. So that's why that's why your um, your lines, your little passageways, will be really close together back here, and a little bit further apart, and a little bit further apart here, and so on, and so on. They're not perfect, but but there is science behind it. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, uh, let's let's give ourselves the darker areas here. I have a lot of medium tones, and there are a lot of medium tones in this. There really aren't. I'm not seeing a whole lot of dark in any of these. So the thing to do is um, em emphasize some of your greenery, probably some of the darks that, that'll be under the flowers and such. You'll want to hit a little bit of dark in the foreground up in here, more than likely. And you know, you could even make little notes off to the side to yourself. Just say, you know, darker, darker. Oops, I'll put that right there. Darker and uh, more saturated. Or you could just say more pure. You could say pretty, whatever you like. And as things get further away, maybe, maybe you want to just notice that they get uh, not only grayer, but like a bluer gray usually. Bluer gray, typically. A bluer gray. Just, just as things go back in space. They get, oh, well, why don't we just say lighter up here too, huh? Lighter. So look how much analysis we've done in a half an hour, you know? I mean, really, it's a, it's a well-spent half an hour. And we could have definitely done some values. Sometimes I'll do my values on a small scale too, but um, I think it's a, not really necessary. I usually use the, the, the thumbnails for placement. Now I'm thinking maybe a little darker in here. And really punch these guys in the foreground. And I'm not even going to, I'm not sure I'm even going to use this much dark green in the foreground. I really want to emphasize those poppies. So you can, you can easily, you know, this is a great way to get them too. just erase out. Now, now I'm working negatively, right? So instead of addition with an eraser, I'm subtracting, getting some interesting shapes that way. You great way, you know, positive negative. You're constantly working positive negative, getting yourself interesting shapes that way. Okay. Okay, and that's interesting enough. I'm thinking I probably want, will end up making the mountains just a touch smaller. But if you already know that, you don't have to redraw. Um, you don't have to redraw another one. What you can do is just, just know that you're going to do that. And I thought, maybe let me blow this out a little bit more. Whoops. Blow this out a little bit more. Let me see how big my hand is up here. I thought we'd do some warm ups first. Yeah. People were telling me last week that um, maybe a little warming up before we start would be a good idea. And I think that's a great idea. So, 
I, I'm a big believer in that. I do a lot of that myself. So how about, you know, we could do a little compositions, but I want to do some, some fun stuff. It's all fun. Let's see. Let's throw out a little bit of sky. Oh, I didn't put that in the frame there, did I? Let's throw out a little bit of sky. I'm using ultramarine blue. N never mind my little tweaky things here. Okay, I'm just using scrap paper. Uh, <laughs> We're warming up with you right now, Rob? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm just going to take a, my my little cloth here and pull out a couple of uh, shades. Little cloud shapes. Maybe something off to the side there. And if you like, you could take a little bit of your, your paint and work back into the cloud if you don't like the exact. configuration of it, something like that. I'm not looking at anything, by the way. I'm just having fun. We'll let that dry up a little bit, and then we'll hit some shadows. How about, and just work at your own pace. You don't have to. We're only doing these just to get a little bit of um, knowledge about the subject and let's see what we got here. and uh, to loosen up and have some fun. All right, let's see what we got here. There we go. Okay, let's try some of those. Those mountains way off in the distance, and I'm I'm doing them way too dark. No problem. It's just start off with a blob. That's way too dark. No problem. I'm just going to give it a I'm going to give it a contour. And I do see a little snow on it. You, you could put that in if you like. Now, if I want to lighten that up, all I'm going to do here is add water. Just adding water. If you're royal, I would just add white. And then I can blot that at the bottom. Because I'm, I'm working at a slight angle. And that'll dry a lot lighter. It did give me kind of a hard edge on the top. And then that's up to you whether you want to keep that or not. I mean, I might, if you don't want to, again, just add water. See, we're already lost into the watercolor. We're already painting, getting into that intuitive part of our brain. and. We haven't even started it yet. If you'll notice, the, the, the mountains will get a little bit lighter at the base, and that's not an illusion. Even the hills in front of it, I can see. This is uh, 179 I'm looking at. Um, if you look at the base of the hills and the mountain, they get a little lighter at the bottom. And that's not an illusion. Um, the cool air will settle. And then maybe, oh, I got a little burst of color in there. I think I'll just dab that out a little bit. Um, maybe I'll hit some foreground hills.
and that won't be very hard edged because I'm pinning over something wet. That's okay, I'm just playing. The only reason I put this in here is, is just to have something a little more distinctive in the, um, in the foreground. See, I'm getting all these things leaking in there. You may choose to cover those up. Uh, I choose to show them off. Just playing around here. I'm gonna... I'm gonna take some green, <clears throat> just Prussian blue and like lemon yellow. And that might be a little too green for doing the far away stuff. So if you add a little bit of magenta to it, the, the magenta is a, is, is a, it's a red, but it's a blue red. So you should kick it back in space a little bit more. So you're basically, you're taking, um, is it lemon yellow, Prussian blue, and to gray it, instead of adding red red, add uh, magenta, which is a bluer red. And what I'm going to do here is just look at it. Look at this. I'm using the side of my brush. I'm laying it flat on there. Look at that. You could sit there and try to do that and mimic all this this way, or you could just do it. Let the brush do the work for you. It'll do it better. See, I should call this cheating in watercolor 101. Let the brush do the work for you. Let Henry's Chinese brushes do the work for you. Look at this thing, watch this. There's those passageways, right? Look at that. I'm just now I'm thinking about those passageways being as they come out your eye in the same, uh, well, like that. Remember that stuff? Yeah. I'm thinking that as I'm doing these. Oh, I'm almost doing the painting here. Darn it. <laughs> this is supposed to be a warm up. And that's an that's enough green. Wow, that might be too much green. So, Rob, can you explain what you mean by letting the brush do the work? It's not that you were running out of paint, was it? No. Well, I'm doing is I'm 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 I have my brush here, and instead of by the way, I'm not putting it down like this. I'm putting it. See, I'm it's flat. It's flat. Mm -hmm. The brush is flat, and the page is flat. So I'm getting I'm getting a dry brush effect, and I'm just skimming the top. Getting that kind of effect. Uh -huh. You see how organic that looks? And if you tried to mimic that, um, you can get it. You can get it. There's definitely other ways to do it. But this is just such a great way. And then it leaves all this white. So as you're putting these things down, I want you to think of leaving white. That's where your poppies are going to be. Now, could we have done it in orange first? We sure could. And chick, chick, we'll just do it right now. Well, that one's drying. I'll just move this over here. I'm going to grab some orange. Um, cad yellow, cad red. Okay, and then we could do the same thing with the orange. Now, that, that's a pretty saturated orange for that far away, but I wanna see what I can get away with here. Here's a good idea too. Um, get your orange pretty watered down. And so in the foreground, it won't be as pure. It won't be as perfect and pure and gorgeous as you want it. Don't worry about it, we'll come back and smack it later. 
That smack it was for you, Lynn. <laughs> she likes it when I say smack it. I love it. Okay, it's so, just so forceful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I, here's the same thing in reverse. We could throw these down like this. You see how we automatically, without even really choosing the path, the brush almost chooses it for you. I'm getting beautiful, wonderful little passageways for my orange with just a couple of strokes. So now we could just add the green into that. It's the same thing in reverse. But here's the kicker is that, um, let me lighten that up in the background, is now that you have, let, let's say I like that layout, I could come back and really smack, see? Smack some orange in there in the foreground and we can leave it light in the background and that'll give us our, what we call atmospheric perspective. Some people call it aerial perspective. That, that's actually wrong. I hear it all the time, but aerial perspective is when you're like in a hot air balloon looking over. It's atmospheric perspective. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's atmospheric for sure. Yeah, you're taking the classes. <laughs> no. So I'm right. Yes. You're right, Rob. <laughs> okay, good, good. So is that orange just cad yellow and cad red? Because it looks yeah. like there's a neutral to it or something. It's like there's a green or something in it. Well, you you probably won't be seeing the same color as I'm seeing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's 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 very very potent. And I don't know if you guys happen to have any Indian yellow or something close to it. Oh boy, that's a good one to do poppies. Throw some Indian yellow into your with a touch of cad red, you'll get an amazing color. Let me see what I got here. What's in Indian yellow? Uh, they got Indians in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, uh, you really want to know? Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they feed um, mangoes to the calves, and, then they, they, and they don't feed them any water. So then they pee, and that's, that's, it turns into a powder, and that's what you're using. Okay, so it's an orange yellow. Yeah. So you, can you see what I'm doing here in the foreground? I'm hitting. That was a serious answer about about yellow. That's how that yellow is made. Are you serious? See, so you know what? You're, yeah. you're my daughter now. She never knows when I'm joking or not. Because <laughs> I'm always saying stuff, and uh, and I could be joking. I might not. That's what I've heard too. I mean, no. yeah. I just heard. A, I, I just threw a little bit of that Indian yellow in here. Can you see how it sort of uh, saturated the foreground a little bit more? Uh, yeah, it, it actually is true. Now, now most of the time when you're using the Indian yellow that you buy, it's probably not made that way because it's probably a chemical. It just looks a lot like Indian yellow. Um, but now some of the more expensive brands, you might actually be using it. Like Holbein, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if you're actually using it and not a chemical. You'd have to call up the company. You know, I actually have a book on it. I, I think I might actually know the information on that. But anyway, much more saturated in the foreground, much less saturated in the background. I'm looking at the photograph. Um, the oranges are really saturated even farther away, so I could probably get more saturated than this. But now what I wanted to show you is, um, let's come back over here to the green. We could take, I'm getting really involved with this thing and we haven't even started painting yet. <laughs> Okay, for our warm-ups here, um, I'm going to just tag some of these guys in the background. And it doesn't matter if they overlap some of your greens a little bit. It's okay. You can dab them. I still am having a hard time finding good, good quality uh, 
uh, paper towels. Okay. So see, I'm just going over that now. Same technique. I'm just dragging it along there, but there we go. You you waited for the green to dry, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now you don't have to. You, you'll get a lot of wet into wet happening that way. This gives you a little bit more control. And if you'll notice in the foreground, I didn't, I didn't really saturate my um, oranges very much. And if you look at all of these, see these little, these little white things, very easy to turn those into poppies. Look, just, just give them a little, make it popalicious. Get a couple of those guys in there, little of those. All right. Then I come back in with a more saturated, a more saturated orange in the foreground. I'm going to throw a little bit of that Indian yellow in there and just let it. Let it go nuts. You know, for those of you that like the liquid mask, I, I don't really like it too much, but um, if you like that stuff, you could take a brush and just dry brush it in there the same way I did mine and then put your things in that way. So you could paint your orange over that, then, then pull up the mask and put in your green. I don't really like the edges it gives me. They, they look a little, um, what's the word, uh, contrived? I don't know, they look a little strange to me. So I'm noticing that the greens tend to be a little bit darker than these oranges. So we can come back and hit those. And I, I think this is enough warming up. <laughs> We're gonna really cut into our uh, time here. I tell you what though, with this much warm up, you, you should have, hopefully this will give you a lot of comfort in this starting. This is very helpful. This Good. is very helpful, thanks Rob. Sure. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and just dry brush that in again. Now I'm gonna get little lights and darks in there and a little wet into wet on the edges because it's mixing with the orange. See? And it looks really, really uh, awesome. Awesome is the word, yeah. And far away, you'll want them getting a little lighter and maybe not as green. I might mix a little bit of gray into it or actually if you just throw a little bit of that poppy color in it it's got red in it it'll it will gray your greens and let's just And as it gets farther away, you'll want soft, softer edges in general. Just soft, softer edges. Well, there's a good way to get that kind of look. The sort of look of poppies without sitting there rendering out every little poppy. So there's a great painter, great uh, California painter. You probably heard of him. Um, I think Granville, uh, something Granville. But he was a California Impressionist. He's mainly known for doing these poppies. He really renders them out. But his, his groupings and everything are really excellent. Beautiful, meandering groupie, groupings that go up and around hills. And he just, he's really excellent. And then he comes into the foreground and gives you like tons and tons of information. Something Granville. Or maybe that was his first name, Granville something. Redmond. That. Yeah, Redmond, yeah. Is it Redmond Granville or is it Granville Redmond? Granville Redmond. Oh, okay. 
because I'm so great at names. <laughs> All right. And then they will we'll just really punch some some stuff up in the foreground. Really, we'll punch some yellows and you know stuff like that. And then really quick on this other one, I'm gonna hit some greens in there. The same way, it's the same thing in reverse. You can approach it either way, whatever way works best for you. All right, I'm gonna hit some of that green. And here I'm starting with the foreground. You certainly could start with the background. And then and I have much less green in this one. And then as these go back in space, I just want them getting lighter. And maybe even add a little bit of blue, blue or blue gray to your greens as they go further away. Just to get the atmosphere. You notice I'm getting a little bit of darker on the edges here. And that can really work for you because it can feel like, like the um, poppies are kind of, as a group, sort of going into sh shadow a little bit under there. Isn't that great? It's a little, it's, it's what I call a twofer. You just overlap the color, it got a little dark. Maybe, maybe even you, what you'll do is you'll come back with a little darkies in there, little shadows and things like that. But I don't want to get carried away. I've already gotten too carried away with this thing. Let's get to the real deal here. I'm gonna use this as my little comp, I love it. All right, let's see. Right. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna put, put them right there, okay. And I'm gonna shoot this out a little bit more. So here's my fingers. Okay. I wanted to put this on a board. Maybe I shouldn't put it on the board. Maybe I'll just stick it on there like that. Never tried this way. Here's my finger and here's my finger. Okay. Okay. See, after that much work, you get a, a good sense of what you're about to do. So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and just, go ahead and throw in my mountains off into the background. And add that little hill in front of it. And it really flattens out. And again, you know, some people really want a portrait of those mountains because they're they're very so if I were doing a commission, I would probably really, really uh, pay attention to the shape of those mountains. But in this case, all I want is some mountains. We'll just give another little peek there. Maybe lift that up a little higher. And come over here. We were going to put a little one up in front there. Something like that. I'm using the whole paper this time, so I'm doing a bigger one. And then we had that sort of a little passageway here there was like a little road or something i'm not sure i want to put the the telephone if i do put any telephone poles in there or whatever it'll be just because i want more depth out of it and 
maybe a little area of interest. I'm not sure I even want it. It just sits in the back of my mind. Okay. And you saw how we threw in those poppies with just the brush. So what you might want to do is just put some lines that are close together way back here. And as you come to the foreground, maybe your lines are a little bit further apart. And that just kind of helps you to get the steps to create some depth in your piece. Uh, I don't adhere to these lines. I just use them as guides. That's all they are. And I'm thinking I do want a couple of clouds in here. So oh, we still got a lot of distance back here. I can pull this down a little bit further. Okay, let's get cooking. Did, does anyone like that that comedian, uh, Jim Gaffigan? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Jim he's, been doing, funny. He's, <laughs> he's been doing all of these things uh, since he's been on uh, quarantine with his family. He's got a big old family. He's got this little routine. He, he goes, let's get cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he'll... He'll make this, he'll do this big song and dance and what he ends up with is like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something, you know, or <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so um, well, I'm even seeing some pink and reds along the horizon there in the picture. We could emphasize something like that. So I'm gonna start off with ultramarine blue in my sky like this and just throw that thing in there. You know what you could do is, how about we leave some of the um, the white? See how I left some white there? We can have, we can make those into clouds. It's some on the horizon too. Those would be nice. I love them right on the horizon there. Here's another way to do clouds. I mean, you see me oftentimes I'll stamp them out with my rag, but here I'm actually a little bit more area up there. Um, here I'm actually just leaving the white of the paper. It doesn't matter. You you could do both. Watch. I could have a couple of little trailers off to the side there or something. Really soft edge. You could come back and soften some of these edges with your rag if you like. Um, make them really misty. It is totally up to you. I got a speck in there. Come back with some blue on the brush. If, if you want to shape some of those, just mess around with them. And we can come back and throw some shadows in there later. Um, Uh, a lot of times, like I said, there, there was a little pink along the the bottom there a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to throw something very, very light and sort of pinkish along there. Maybe blot that a touch. Usually your, your atmosphere, if you'll notice, the sky gets a little lighter as it gets toward the bottom. So... Um, That's more atmospheric perspective there. I'm just blotting that out, making it a little bit lighter as we get down toward the horizon. The other thing you can do is um, you can hit a little, if, if your sky got a little bit too, maybe it needs a little dark, you can hit a little dark on the top and that'll give you a little more depth too. Now I'm gonna have a little bloom right here. I can see it's the, the wet, there was a little water pushed in there. Uh, 
you can choose to fix that. I choose to leave those. That was when I came back and, and played with some edges. But if you want to fix that, all you have to do is just dab it with your sponge again. Um, and another way to fix those is to really get all the water out of your brush. So it's very dry. See how dry that is? Very dry. Get it to a point, And then you can come back and just tickle those. What's happening is the, the brush is absorbing those. So if you want to know how to fix those. But I love those blooms, so I just leave them personally. And we certainly could come back with a touch more. We could easily come back and glaze in a little bit more of that pink later, yellows and pinks. What happens is along the, uh, as you look toward the horizon, the lower you get, the more, you're looking through more atmosphere. And the more atmosphere you look through, the more dust is in the air, could be smog. Out there, you're probably just looking through dust. It's it's kind of windy, so you'll get you'll get uh, warms and cools in the air. You'll get like little yellows and pinks and lavenders in the as you get toward the um, horizon. Even on an extremely clear day, where you're looking up up way up into the sky up here, where it's very blue, as you get toward the horizon, it still might get a little gray because you're. On, remember. This is something our eyes don't see very much because we're not in wide open spaces like this. So we can't see that distance. That far of a distance is hard unless you get up on top of a mountain or you're you know, way up high somewhere. It's hard to see this, this kind of distance. You know what's really cool about this is it's only an hour away, like an hour and a half maybe. Okay, now, I'm gonna hit those mountains, kind of blue, maybe a little bit more violet. You wanna make a blue violet, just add a little bit of magenta to your blue. And I just started off like a blob like that, like everything else, it's all blobs. And that's pretty dark. But just like my other one I, I demoed with uh, earlier, um, just add water. Just add water and we'll, you can play with the contour. If your drawing shows right through, uh, I love that. So, but if you're, I guess if you're really trying to make a very finished watercolor, which, you know, when you're, when you're in your studio like this, this would be the place to do it. When you're doing plein air, I, I mostly do plein air. So I, I like to leave all that immediacy. And even when I do my finished work, I, I like, I like the immediacy. So. I really need to lighten that up. Or I'm just gonna come back and hit this with a, yeah. It needs to be lighter. You can barely see it back there. I'm just gonna add water, move this around a little bit. Okay. All right. And I would stay away from using green blues way that far away, unless you see something really green. But typically things that are this far away are really got so much atmosphere into them. You'll want to go for more of the violet blue. And uh, it'll tend to be, so, so of course that's ultramarine and maybe cobalt. Those are good blues for using for far away. 
but it's quite gray back there. Um, you can gray that blue by adding its complement, which is orange, which I'm sure you have plenty of. <clears throat> All right. This little hill in the foreground there. We got this hill. I'm going to throw just a touch of orange back there. I see how that grays it. A little bit of orange. There we go. It's color theory. Uh, it's it's applied color theory. Uh, well, there was a great painter at Art Center <clears throat> named Dan McCall. He said he was a great teacher, and um, I used to call his. I mean, I never heard anybody call him this, but I used to call his class because it was head painting, but it wasn't really head painting. It was it was color theory, and we just use the head as an excuse to play with color theory. And um, I used to call his class applied color theory. Okay. A little more. And if it leaks into the background a little bit, I don't mind. That's just the watercolor. It's just a great watercolor effect. And I love that. I'm gonna hit this one in the foreground. A little bluer. And here's a little secret. Take a little water on the bottom, just a little water. I'm only using water there. And that's called keeping a wet edge. So I need one here too. I mean, I'll, I'll bet you the Italians have a word for that, but I, I call it keeping a wet edge. <laughs> like I kind of like how older uh, generations would refer to things in, in America. Like if you look at uh, Edgar Payne, <clears throat> he has a book called Composition of Outdoor Painting. It's not called Composition of Plain Air. It's called Composition of Outdoor Painting. Because we in America, we have a name for it too. <laughs> it's called all outdoor painting, but it, it does it just doesn't sound as good as plein air, right? I mean, you know, those French they know how to make everything sound good. Okay, here's a little kicker. Ready? Remember, as your oranges get far away. They get bluer and grayer. Well, look, I have this blue gray right here. So why don't I just throw up my orange? See, there's a little orange. I can throw that in there and I'm already, see it mixes with the blue and you get the gray. I mean, it's, you see, it's a beautiful thing. I could have just mixed that color, but it's already there for me. Just to get some of those orange areas. It instantly <clears throat> blueifies it. So that gives me my distant ones pretty, pretty, pretty good. Now, as I come into the foreground, I think I'm going to go the poppy way. I'm going to hit the poppies in first. All right, so load up with some orange. And remember what I did in the beginning, I added a lot of water to it. That way, the, the ones that are far away back here will, won't be as saturated. That one, that's pretty saturated. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to that. All right. <clears throat> and I'm looking, I just moved over to that um, 134. That's the one with the little bush off. There's a little bush right here. I'm looking over there now. Yeah, 
yeah, leave yourself lots of, wow, that is really covered. Uh, leave yourself lots of, um, little, little patches where the green would come through like this. Just using the side of my brush there, just using the side. And you thought doing poppies was going to be hard. You know, once you learn this technique, you can use it on a billion things. I mean, I do clouds this way. I do paths this way. All kinds of things. <clears throat> All right. There's a lot of yellow in that too. Wow. A lot more yellow than I thought. You know, and some artists will just leave it real painterly in the, you know, they'll just let their brush strokes go free in the foreground. You can compose this or just let things rip as much as you want. There's an audience for everything, let me tell you. Some art, some audiences like everything to be really perfect and tight. Other people, just they just wanna look at stuff that's very loose and relaxing and where the artist was just caring but not caring so much, you know? Just being an artist. I like to say, one of my favorite analogies is, and I can remember as a little kid, Boy, did my ears perk up when I when I heard musicians, and we had a lot of musicians in the neighborhood. Um, and when they were warming up, that was my favorite. That was always my favorite. I'd hear them play, and I thought that was really great. But then you'd hear them just warm up or just goof off on their own, and that was my favorite. Just there's something about when the when artists aren't really thinking, they're just. Like, have you ever heard an orchestra warm up? Wow. I love that. It's so chaotic and it, and it has an interesting way of composing itself. I think the same way when I paint. And we could leave that floating on the outside. You know, your composition could be in here or maybe take it right off the page. Totally up to you. Just, you know, as they get further away, they just sort of, they get much, these zigzags get much closer together way back here. That's all. It's the best. Now let's punch some yellows in the foreground because I'm using Indian yellow. Look at this, her pal, it just, it just intensifies it. And by the way, you could easily break in some greens right over your poppies if, if you need to. Like mine are getting pretty dense, they're pretty thick. Um, if I feel so inclined, I might throw in a couple of, uh, break some of the greens right into it. Actually, it's not as thick as the poppies I'm looking at. I will tell you, when I was out at this poppy field, I still have memories. I could not believe the reflected light. You're standing there and everybody like under their chin and under their nose and like in their clothes, if somebody was wearing white, you could see just pure orange in it. You never saw anything like it. It's just a total nature phenomenon. I'm just hitting a little, little bit of yellow as things get further away. I mean, it's such a pure color in nature. And that's just the, re that's the reason we react to it so much is because we just don't see a pure color like that in nature very much. Not on that scale. I mean, you do get a blue sky. 
And I guess we get oranges in the sky, but I mean, just to see them in, as flowers is just phenomenal. Okay. And I'm not going to bother waiting for this to dry or anything. I'm going to go ahead and make myself up a green by um, Prussian blue. I got some lemon yellow. You certainly could use cad yellow too. I, let's see what we got here. If it gets, if your green gets too saturated, like I'm looking at those greens out there, they're pretty, um, they're pretty gray. You could throw in a little bit of red in there. That'll gray them. Anything reddish will gray. And it doesn't have to be pure cad red or anything. Anything in the red family will gray your, your greens. And you certainly could start up here in the foreground and start this way. Or you could start in the background and work your way forward. It doesn't really matter. I got a little dark. I'm just, you know, I haven't completely. Now I know I keep this on a clipboard all the time because it's moving all over the place. Here, let's put this right here. Okay. Still moving. Oh, well. Um, let me put. I love these gum erasers. I just use them to keep everything still. <laughs> okay. Back in business here. So what I was trying to say is, you know, just because you have these shapes that you've made randomly with the orange doesn't mean you're necessarily finished. Um, you can you can still carve back into them with your green. See, so in that sense, I think my, maybe it was a smarter idea going the way I did because. Um, Well, no, you could probably go back and forth the other way. Yeah, that's fine. I was just thinking these these greens go over the oranges a little little easier than in reverse. All right. Let's pull this over here a touch. There we go. And you see how it's bleeding around the edges? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything. <laughs> People worry too much. Maybe that's the secret of watercolor right there. When I was learning, when I learned watercolor at Art Center, and I taught myself, but I did get a little guidance. I just remember. Um, I didn't know any better to, than to get worried. I didn't know I was supposed to get worried. I, did, I didn't, you know, people, I don't know why, but pe this medium somehow has this sort of mystique that you're supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to I don't know, worry you or something. I don't know. And that goes for all mediums. It doesn't, the medium doesn't really matter. I think I was just taught an attitude which is let things happen let things surprise you you know you never know what's going to happen it's a it's a mystery that's the that's why i paint i've always felt that way since a kid just i always thought the funnest part of painting was the mystery of you know let's see what can happen here you know, and then when I went back to school, it was all science and I needed that. It was great. And then, so now, you know, I marry the two. Like, so that is a pretty light green. I thought it was, you see, there's little highlights on the green in the poppy fields too. And so a lot of this light stuff, We'll work for that. We'll just come back and make things a little darker and a little darker. All 
I don't know if you can hear my wife in the background. She's teaching a class. <laughs> She's pretty loud. I get pretty quiet. Okay. And remember, these greens back here are just going to be really close together. These are really far away. I might even lighten them up a little bit, but I think those are probably dry, nice and light. I'm just going to hit them a little, just tag them with my, with my, uh, <clears throat> with the rag there a little bit. Now it looks to me like the light is mainly coming from the top right side. So most of my shadows, and there aren't very many shadows in this piece, but seem to be coming from almost straight in front of me, but a little bit off to the right. So, um, you know, believe it or not, even, even the poppies have a little bit of shadow to them. So what I would do is come back with some, uh, we'll do a little bit of the, uh, the greens first. Little shadows underneath the poppies. So if we're off, you know, it might be in here a little bit more like that. Like that. I'm just kind of. It almost looks like a like it's like the poppies are floating or something because it has a hard edge. Now, if I just soften that edge, you could even dry brush that in a little bit if you like. I'm just getting a, a softer edge. What color did you use, Rob? Uh, the, the same green. I just used it more without so much water in it. Yeah, a little off to the right. They don't have to be perfect or anything. Kind of random. But just something under them to, to give. It gives them a little bit of a... The shadows give things a little bit of depth. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like the dry brush is working good. I'll use a little bit of that. So mostly under here and then like in here. And then on, on the right side, I mean, I'm sorry, on the left side right in here. I want to hit a little bit. I keep them really random because the uh, the flowers and the grasses really break them up. So you certainly could just take your fingernail into there and just kind of break them up a little bit, scratch them up. I'm just breaking them up a little bit. The dry brushing works really well too. Do a little bit of dry brushing in there. That's a little dark for that far away. Just gonna. There you go. And the. As they get further away, a little bit lighter. See, the nice thing about this is that we can keep punching this. If we wanted things to be saturated or darker, that's why I started everything off pretty light. Again, little zigzaggy shapes. That's pretty dark to be that far away. Now it's up to you how much 
detail you want to put into your poppies. Uh, some of these have a lot of detail in the foreground. The ones that are shot uh, far away, like uh, the 179, there's literally no detail. It's really up to you. If you if you wanted to, you could hit a couple of little detailed ones. Um, there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, we could take a little dark in the foreground here and let's say go around one, like you know, a couple of these little guys like this. Create little fo focal points. But what's happening is that each each flower makes a shape like this. Uh, makes a shape kind of like this. So from far away, I mean, we're still not getting tons of detail into it, but each flower sits in a conical shape about like that. I mean, I mean, if you really want to get technical, it's 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 a little bit more like this. But sort of a but I think of it more like this. Just just keeping it. So as you you could just paint little shadows around. And if you see a whole flower, that means there's shadow in front of it like this. And you could be here all day doing that. The, the secret to doing those is just don't do very many of them. Find yourself a little focal point, like let's say right around here or something, and give yourself a couple of really nice ones. You'd believe you, you only need a few. That's why you really want to look at great painters that do that. Um, Again, uh, yeah, any of the California Impressionists will, will be really great at that. But um, another another great thing to do here is take a little white. Here's some white. There's my uh, my white gouache, or Chinese white will be just as good. And you could paint yourself one. Just paint, you know, a couple of them. Um, you don't want very many because there wouldn't be very many all by themselves, like I said earlier. But if you just put a couple like this in the foreground, here and there with white. And if you'll notice on my little my little misses where I you're seeing the white paper, they, they could certainly act like individual poppies. But yeah, you could you could throw in a few like this. Not very many. I put them in like that, let them completely dry, and then I'll gla glaze orange right over them. Maybe I'll let those dry and then show you later. The secret to that is not not too many of those, or you'll end up doing. Oh gosh, this is a nightmare. I'm on two thousand two hundred and twenty-seven. It's here. The secret is the the, the old saying in painting is. Oh, I forgot. What is it? No, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> it's not what you put in. It's what you leave out. That's the old saying. I almost forgot. That wouldn't be good. Okay. Now, you know, now I can come back and reinforce a couple of things. Like I could come back here and maybe I think it needs a little dried a little bit light on me. All right. And that, that makes me I'm okay. That means I gotta make this guy a little bit darker. In the foreground. Maybe all of this. And hopefully I'll get a little twofer here. So I'll get a soft edge 
because that's already wet back there. And I'll get a darker value at the same time, hopefully. It looks like it's really going to take off on me. No problem. I could just take a dry brush and absorb some of that like that. Just if it's getting away from me too much, if it's starting to bleed up into my background mountains too much, I kind of like it. Yeah, I do. I'm looking at it small up there. It does look pretty good. But, you know, if you, if you need to relax that a little bit, just... And you can add a little variation. It doesn't have to just be blue. You could add a little bit of violet in there. Blues and violets work really nice. So there's just a little touch of violet, a little taste of violet right in there. It'd be nice. Maybe in this foreground hill here, I could have that be a little bit more on the green side. I'm going to glaze a touch of lemon yellow on it. Just to make it feel like it's coming forward. Maybe even a little bit more. You know, it's on, on some of those pictures too, you might have seen that the um, the poppies go right up and over the hills. That would have been a nice move. I don't know why I didn't do it. Darn, I wish I would have done that. Oh, well, I got to start all over. No. There's always a solution. Let's see if I can add yellow. Now, if I add orange to that, it's just, it's going to end up too dark. So what you can do, if I wanted to take some of those up and over that mountain, just because maybe you get a new idea. You know, in oil, you can make those changes really easy, but in watercolor, you can't. Or can you? Oh, yes, you can. Okay, now I'm going to take uh, some of these poppy, some of my neander, neandering patterns here. I'm going to pull it right over my, my hill. And really get it skinny as it goes over the top. Like fat here on the bottom or on the front. You see how I hooked it on the bottom there? Because it flattens out. So as it goes toward the top here, it might get a little bit skinny as it goes over the top. And then it gets fat here. That's perspective too. Um, a little fatter in the middle and then it levels out and gets a little skinnier toward here. And they could do all kinds of neandering little things. And we'll just let that hill sit there for a little bit. Dry up and then I'll hit a little bit of a uh, little orange on there. Basically, what I'm doing is bringing it back to the white of the paper. <clears throat> See, you can make changes in a watercolor. I didn't, I mean, this isn't necessarily watercolor class, but just, just for people who have all these doubts about watercolor, like, I think a little bit afraid. You have nothing to fear. But... <laughs> the transparent watercolor club of <laughs> just a, they'll come and get you. Okay. Let me see something here. I think um I think on the bottom side of our clouds very, very lightly. I just want some very, very light shadows. Uh, I'm going to make them on the sort of, I'm going to take magenta, ultramarine blue, and a whole lot of water. I'm probably talking about 98% water because we want an extremely light
extremely light shadow on the bottom there. That's that's too dark. Wow. I can't, can't believe that's that dark. And you can just add water to it to lighten it up or see there, I'm mean, just getting a little bit of, I'll showcase that a little bit more. Um, so the light's mainly coming from the top and the right hand side, you know, it's almost noon. It's probably like one o'clock or something, two o'clock. Just a little bit. And you know, you might want soft edges there, so. You can use just water on the top and fade it into the white, just water. And there's so many things you can do with clouds. You can add a little yellow to them and get them a, give them like a little sun kissed. I think I'll just leave them white. All right, these are still. I just want to show you what you can do with these whites here in the foreground. It's still not 100% wet. I mean, not 100% dry. But as you can see, we kind of brought it back to white with the uh, with the paint. There we go. See, and it just looks like we left that area like that. I'm just glazing these in. See, now if I glaze that one over, watch, it'll just fade right into the color that's behind it. You don't even know I did it. Here are these, here are those. And that'll give you a little independent Poppies. Please don't do those until the end. I mean, right now I'm doing them just to show you. And if if what you end up with by the by crit time, which is only an hour, I better quit here pretty soon. Um, but if all you end up with is you know nice patterns of uh, poppies and you don't get a lot of detail in them, I think you're just fine. So, excuse me, Rob. Do you recall what? What uh, colors you mix to get the green that you have there in the uh, foreground? Yeah, uh, Prussian blue, lemon yellow, and I and I think I added a little bit of something reddish to it, like maybe a, just a very little bit of magenta because I didn't. They were turning out too green. You seem to use magenta on every possible occasion. Yeah, that, that that's a complementary color, and it'll grade a little bit. So. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Sure. Okay, now, now the darkest darks in the piece are right in the behind the little poppies in the foreground. So, you know, typically in watercolor, you'll start off with uh, like this. You start off with the lighter lights and then you end up with a darker dark. See how that gives a little punch up there in the foreground? Just like the ones in your photograph. Now that might be a little bit dark, but you know, just for demo purposes, I can leave them like that. Just pop in a few of those guys in the foreground. Maybe I'll hit it with a paper towel a little bit there. Just just a couple of those, just to show you what that can be like. I, I, I don't have time to finish this whole thing, but um what you can also do back here is because you know when as you get further away you just don't see that level of detail but what you can do is you may end up seeing a little bit of a dark in there once in a while so you might want to just give yourself a little flick of dark 
once in a while. Here's a couple little guys. They need a little dark behind them. And even in in your um, poppies themselves, you will get little flicks of green and things like that. So, and I really masked, I really kept my mass here very grouped, which is the way I do everything, right? I'm always talking to you guys about that. Um, then I'll break things up, see? All I'm doing is I'm just using that little green, that little green here and there. I'm just kind of, you see, I don't do this until way late. I don't start off doing this kind of stuff. So you might want to include some of these. You might not even want that level of detail. It's, it's really up to you and your own personality. But you know, you may have a hole in there and you might want to just dry brush it like this. There's lots of... Uh, one thing I'm warning you about though is this, this the stuff I'm doing right now, you can get carried away with it really fast. I mean, less is more, okay? Less is more. And every time you do that, I want to pop a little darks in there. Just little little darkies in there. Sits things down. Be real picky and choosy about the way you put these little breaks and these little breaks into the form and in here. When I'm doing plain air, I probably just about finished. Um, for a more worked out studio painting, I might put a little bit more detail. When I used to do murals, I was this is just a this is just a this might not even be the lay-in, you know. When I used to do murals, everything looked like a photograph when it was done. And you know, it was an it was a neat engineering fee, but not not really very artistic, but Uh, you know, it was one of those things where you go, wow, I did that. I can't believe I did that. That's amazing. I feel like you just ran like a, a marathon or something. So as you break into these, see how these, these two guys are far apart, right? But these will be much closer together. And if you know, the, the just notice too that the, um, the poppies bunch together more. So you don't get as many breaks into the form way back here as you do up here. So think about it. Not very many back here. And they're longer and linear as you get further away. They flatten down, flatten out. You know, one thing I didn't put in, and I'll just do this really quickly and let you guys get to your business, um, is I'm taking the orange I made and I'm adding a little bit of red to it, which is I'm going to shade, I'm going to shade my poppies, but instead of adding the complementary color, which would be blue, that would turn it kind of greenish. Uh, I'm going to use red, like magenta. Use magenta with your orange. Let's see. Mm, maybe that's not even, let's see. I'm getting something not quite the color I want. Try cad red. Let's see what we got here. All right. So some of these, what happens is that the um, the poppies get a little bit shaded too. They're not all the same value. Some are light, some are a little darker. And you can dry brush those in. I'm just not, my, my color needs to be wetter. Get that red wet. <clears throat> All right, let's try that. You 
maybe a little bit wetter than that. So again, um, on the left-hand side of your poppies, because the light's coming from this direction, this will go into shadow right around here. And it will over here too. And you know, maybe up in the front a little bit more. You'll want some of those breaking into the form as well. So not all catching highlight. Isn't that a great finish, finishing kind of, just the dark, the way to darken that orange is to add more red to it. And that's called shading analogously. So instead of going to the other side of the color wheel, we're shading with the color right next to it on the color wheel, maybe a, like a, like a red orange. That's pretty dark. Thing about it is uh, you can always go darker. I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. And I'm doing this with just a dry brush touch. That's pretty dark still. Add more water. I might have added too much water, but whatever, let's see. Oh, that's good. So I got a little drippy with these ones, not so dry brushy. You get another look that way. That's cool. Whatever you like. I like the drippy look. It's funny, you know, uh, I'll put a color down and it starts off real drippy because I have a lot of water on it. And as I go, it gets less drippy and more dry brushy. And I, and I like that too. It is weird. Sometimes you feel like you can do no wrong. It's a great feeling. And mostly that happens when you're just not sweating it out too much and you're just having a good time, loving it, loving what you're doing. That's all. You know, when you realize painting isn't about being perfect. It can be, but it doesn't necessarily have to be, especially when you're painting for your own pleasure. Um, this is why so many modern artists love the sketches and the, the little color comps. And that's why they went to the watercolors too, because, because the artists, you'll see, they would look at like master painters from hundreds of years ago. And, you know, they wouldn't show these works. These were just their, their own personal things. They were just their kind of warm up things when they weren't, you know, showing how dazzling you with all of their brilliance. They were doing these things and when they were relaxing, they, they're so beautiful. Be, they, they made it in that, that's why you see American watercolor have a very different look than uh, European watercolors. It's, it's, it's an attitude. It's not that they couldn't do it. It's, it's the attitude changed. The attitude went from covering up all of your technique, you know, covering up your process. Like you'll see, you know, I'll leave my little pencil lines and stuff like that. Uh, so it went from covering up the process to showing off the process. So that's modern. Show off the process. And interestingly enough, uh, Miles over there is doing um, entertainment design. 
And if you'll notice, that's really a lot about covering up. It's, it's actually classicism is what you're doing. It is classicism. It's, it's covering up the process. You never see any artist's hand in there. It's all about the illusion. And that's great too. You know, classical art never leaves. It might not be the, the main thing. Maybe Banksy is the main thing today. Who knows? But, but uh, it never leaves. Because classical is classical. There's... It's the rules. The rules are always with us. And we use the rules. In our case here, we're doing a lot more improvisation, a lot more. So um, we're, we're using the rules to help us solve problems. But if we have a little spontaneous mistake and we go, ooh, I like that, we just leave that. You wouldn't do that in classical painting. I'm gonna pull a little bit of the, my poppies up here on the, sprinkle a little orange on the hills over there. It's dry now. Might even wanna hit that crazier, but see if you, well, by the way, when you go over the white, if you, maybe you've already found this out because I didn't say anything, <laughs> but um, if you keep going over that white, it'll pick it up and you'll turn to mush because you've, now you're mixing the color with the white instead of laying it on top. So when you do that glaze, like over here, like when I did these, you just hit it once and that's it. Sorry, I didn't say anything. Maybe subconsciously I wanted you to make that mistake, you see? Because that's how you learn, by making mistakes. <laughs> uh -huh. Or maybe I just like to torture you. No, I don't know. Because it's subconscious and I don't know, see? Okay, now I'm babbling. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys meet me back here at um, 12, 12, 15. Do, uh, give me some photograph, a, a photograph of your work. Um, try to shoot it the correct way, you know, so it's, so I don't have to rotate it cause I can't rotate it on my email. And if you don't know how to do that, if it doesn't come out correct, just shoot it like, um, landscape and then shoot it portrait and that should work. Rob. Yeah. I found one time I didn't crop my picture before I mailed it yeah. and it came out sideways. So. I well, think crop. if you if you crop your picture, somehow that sets it upright, and then before you email it, it's okay, I guess. Uh, I are don't you know. on Are you on an Apple? I'm on Apple. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's true of the Apple. Oh, okay. It's not so with a. Uh, Maybe it is. I don't know. PC. Okay. okay you like All right. Okay, I'll see you back here then. Okay. George? George? Um, I'll be, yes. I'll need your email because I don't have it. Oh, is this Maggie? This is Marie McDuffie. Oh, Marie, Marie. I'm sorry, Marie, Marie, I'm sorry. Recording now. And I'm sharing the screen. Okay, there we go. Ooh. 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 All right. Pretty. I did photo number, th uh, the last photo, six. Ooh, I like those. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Pretty mountains. Um, all right, George. Wow, okay, cool. Now, let me get my little, uh, whoops. Oh, darn it, I'm sorry. Um, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Oh, and up close. And there we go. Oh, 
There we go. Okay. <clears throat> nice one, George. Wow. Yeah, cool. All right. Nice colors. You know, I love this line work. This is fun. You know, you know, that's a stylistic move. And you know, sometimes if your if your values between your mountains and your sky are too close, you can you can use a little line work to separate them. You know, it could be um, your subconscious telling you you need you need something separating that, or it could be just very very intentional. It's just, it, it doesn't really matter actually, because it's a nice stylistic move. The other thing you can do is see this white, the white you're putting in right there. Yeah. You can take a foggy kind of white, like real milky, in the background, and give yourself a some, something a little bit lighter just to separate the sky from the mountain. Uh huh. Right there. But the line works great. I love it. It's just to you know talk about all the different ways, all the different ideas about it. Um. <clears throat> hey, Rob. Yeah. Nelly here. I just are you recording? Oh yeah. Thank you. Yes, uh, you know what? I'm. Yes, it, it, now, it, now you got me doubting myself. <laughs> it, it's it, it's blinking, nor mine. Is okay, it, good. great. Is, it, is okay. it blinking? Yeah, it is. Okay, thanks, Shelly. My apologies. Okay. Good. No, no, don't apologize, please, please, because <laughs> I'll forget. I get so into looking at everybody's painting that I just forget about the most obvious things. Story of my life. Okay, it's so the important I, things you're you're in engaged. Yeah. So now, a lot of these oranges didn't come out like these ones, and that's because you don't have anything of light behind them. So well, they'll come out darker, right? Yeah, I was trying to fade them into the, the distance. Yeah. So that, that's why you need to back it with a, take a little bit of white, and it doesn't have to be this opaque or anything. It could be like, uh, I have that more transparent one here. If you take a little white and just kind of fade that in there so it's not, it doesn't have to be pure white, but something like that. And then put your, let it dry, and then put your um, orange over that. You'll get a, you'll get a little bit better. You know, yeah. Hey, that okay. works. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So that's a little too uh, uh, saturated, but that's the idea. So if you want to get that, just, just use a little white, back it up. Let it dry first, and then glaze over your with your with your orange, and that might come out to too orange like this one did. So, you know, you'll want to work in a little bit of a gray orange. Uh, yeah. Go over it with a gray orange, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that looks really cool. I think your clouds look cool. Maybe I would have tried on your clouds to maybe, and this is just an idea because it does look cool. Uh, maybe take another cloud, just like you did here, right behind this, right behind that, like that, and pull it out. So it uh -huh. feels like it's kind of going out, maybe. Okay. But the idea there is to, um, uh, whoops. The idea there is to just have the, have the cloud feel like it's coming in back of the uh, hill there. That's all. When I pull something in back of something, I usually pull it out the other side if I can. I don't. It's just okay. a. It's a habit now, but it's a. It's a follow through thing that usually happens in nature. Uh huh. Yeah. And that, uh, that'll be easy to fix with white gouache. Sure. Yeah. The, the, none of these. You don't have any real big problems here. Um, if, if, uh, are you are you having a problem with anything? <clears throat> uh, my the basic problem I had was the, the orange on the mountains. I, I didn't know yeah. what to do to make it look a little better, but I wanted it to grade down. So, right. So if if I were to glaze in something blue on top of that, see how that grays it down? Yeah, but it's almost too gray. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I can't adjust that in this little thing, but it, it's, it's the idea. So, oops. and then uh, maybe in the foreground, some of these darks got really dark. If yeah. you want to 
you could take some orange over them or you could take some green um some green a green wash yeah glaze <coughs> yeah, right up into them yeah some greens and i'm thinking possibly you know i could even see a few more greens back here not very many but just here and there that's all just, uh -huh. just to break up all that orange Maybe, maybe a little green at the bottom, a little orange at the top. It's only like that. All right. Okay. Nice job. All right. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So, did we ever fi figure out who? Uh, oh. Oh. Where's the fling? Oh. Huh. It's not there now? That is weird. How could they? They can't erase their email from mine. No. There is a Who is this? <laughs> I, who, I, who's? I don't think Daniel gets back till after one, right? I, I'm back. So maybe that's Daniel, huh? No, 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 no. It who is. is Not me. <laughs> oh. It really is a Zoom bomber. Oh. Is this a Zoom bomber? But how polite. That Zoom bomber actually sent the work. <laughs> it's a nice one. Yeah, actually, no, did the work. <laughs> Are they, let me look. Let me see if they're in my participants here. Uh, maybe they're just not here. Why? Well, how can you be in a class and not be in the gallery? Yeah. I don't. I don't see their name here. Oh, that is weird. Well, I guess I'm going to have to start doing more uh, password waiting waiting room stuff now. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have to be that way, but oh well. That's your email. That's not your Zoom. So. Oh, maybe they just so, stole the pictures you sent. Maybe they weren't in the Zoom oh. class. Oh, look, look, it says it's Henry. Robert and Henry, here is my practice watercolor painting. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, it's Henry. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, how are you doing? I think that's Henry's. Henry's not here. Oh, good. Hi, Rose. Almost lunchtime for this little girl. How are you doing, sweetheart? Um, hey, Mike, could you mute yourself? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. That's my son on the phone with my granddaughter. Okay. Tell him hi. <laughs> hey, Rob. I I, I switch with Toby, so I don't go on till one thirty. Okay, so I I got you here. Okay. Um, Daniel, nice colors. Wow. Hey. That's not me, is it? No, that's not me. Oh, this isn't you. No. Who is it? You need to screen share again. Well, that's Alice. I'm sorry, Alice. Okay. Where? Are you there, Robert? Alice? Hi. Yes, I am. Sorry. Okay. Uh, are you sharing? I'm not your... sharing this, am I? I only have yours. Oh. Yeah, hold, I on, hold on. Hold <laughs> on. Uh, I don't. Oh, there you go. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, hey, Henry. Are you there? Uh, this is not mine. I know, Henry. Did you did one of your students um, take our oh. class with the name Fling? I don't know their name because okay. All uh, right, maybe uh, me an email. Left. Uh huh. Anyway, you, just, uh, you could be because I have several students following uh, my Zoom. Yeah, I don't know how he got your email though. I didn't give them. Maybe Rob. Rob said it. To oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He told Marie. Oh, that's right. right. That's, that's how you, All right. Uh, <laughs> so that that's not that's okay. If if uh, if if that person is here, that's okay. I I didn't uh, know who it was. Uh, that's uh, next time, maybe um, I will. Yeah, I will show them how to join your class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. just reply to that person later. Yeah. I'm just glad it wasn't a, a Zoom bomber. I've never had a Zoom bomber before. <laughs> It wasn't a Zoom bomber. No. Okay. 
it, it, yeah, it could let be. All like your, let all your students know that they're invited. Okay, let's get into this. Uh, Alice, nice. Okay, I like these darks. See this dark right here? Can you can you yeah. see my? Let me uh, let me get my little thing here. <laughs> um, uh, this gets a little dark right in here. I think I'd save the I would save these darks for up here. Okay. So that's real easy. Just just wet that and dab it a little bit so you take off a little bit of the paint. And then and then save those for up here. Now if if you look at the bottom, see how your marks they, they just stop like that? Uh-huh. Yeah. They they would have a little bit of shading because the because the light is coming from this direction right here. Okay. Like that. So if they're if the light's coming from well, actually more in the front like this. But um if the light's coming from there, then there'd be a little bit of shading. So just at the bottoms, put a little bit of shading like that at the bottoms. Uh, okay. I'm being, I'm being really dramatic about it with the black here, but that's it'll it'll um it'll it'll ground them and they won't look like they're floating. That's all. Right. Because when right. you just have sticks like this, they, they need something at the base so they feel like they're floating. It's a small okay. move, but once you get used to doing that, every time you do foliage of any kind, you'll just know that little trick and it, it grounds everything and makes it feel like it's sitting down. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, nice colors. I really, really like your colors a lot. Uh, this might be a little saturated of a yellow. <laughs> I when know. I put yellows in my white clouds, I put them in like almost like 98% water. Or maybe 99% water. I mean, there's hardly any yellow in it. Just to give it a little bit of a hint, like this right here is kind of just a hint. Yeah. And this right here is pretty strong. Right, right. And you can lift a lot of that out too, by the way, if you want. Or, you know, just remember our best friend, Mr. White Quash. <laughs> so that's always, uh, and I always try everything usually before I do the white wash. So now another thing is, is, uh, um, <clears throat> Since you got pretty high with this hill right here, I mean it's not it's not low laying, so okay. that, and that's just fine. Well, what I would do though is maybe hit a little bit of lighter stuff at the base of this hill. Okay. Hold on, let me like that, just a little bit lighter. Yes. At the base, and it um it makes it feel like the cool air settling, and you have a little more atmosphere in it. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a quick thing. Yeah, yeah. You can you can do it with a rag. You can try it, and you can also do it with the white. Um, either way, or both. Try both. They both work. Okay. And see this dark right here. Yeah. A real, a real dark dark. Um, I think I would try lightening that up a little bit. I mean, these values right here are really good. These are getting they're moving forward a little fast. Okay. Now, when you're talking about things that are that far away, even the little like this, see this value right there? Yeah. And see how different it is from this value? Even those little values make a huge difference. So it's weird. But um, so I would just lighten that up a little bit. Yeah. As you get further back in space, the value differentiations get more <laughs> subtle and more subtle. Yes. yes. Just realize that. So I have, a quick, I have a question about the mountain, that particular mountain you're looking yeah. at that you told me about that's dark yeah. <clears throat> in the center. So yeah. my question is when you're doing a mountain that's kind of hazy, <laughs> does it have uh, different tones or is it all kind of the same? You know what I mean? Is it like all hazy? Oh, you know, my... My attitude is that uh, if the values are right, yeah, I just let the paint kind of do what it wants. And sometimes I'll get some saturated paint back there, and sometimes it'll be grayer. Um, I usually just I'm I'm fine with whatever the paint wants to do on its own. Okay. But I'm really kind of analyzing the value of it. So if the right, value right. is off, um, like see these yellows back here. What, yeah. what is probably back there is probably not that yellow, okay? But it doesn't right. bother me because the value looks pretty good. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. 
No, I'm just saying maybe, maybe this one's a little bit too yellow. So, but here, here. I, I wouldn't put a yellow that yellow here. That would really punch it forward. But the little subtle yellows can work back there. I mean, you know, and that's okay. a, a personal thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I do let the, the, the colors meander and do what they like. Yeah. So, okay, so I love your little path here. Near, 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 near. That's cool. <laughs> I love, uh, Paths can be great, you know, and literal, like, uh, literal paths can be really fun, but also I consider these little passageways of green, I consider those paths too. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it's important. Yeah. So, those are great. Um, right, you shaded this very nicely, because this would have a shadow, and it would cast a shadow over this way, that's right. You did that everywhere, that's, and that's what... That's what gives your sort of um, your patch, your patch of poppies. Uh, it gives it a little vol, a little more volume. Mm -hmm. By putting that on there, so that that's nice. Um, good. I think you know these are pretty hard edges. Right back here, so I would work on maybe just do a little dry brush edge there, or see this little fadeaway you did there. Yes. I might do a couple of those guys right around here, you know, and look for a hard edges. Now's the time in the piece where you'll want to play with edges. Should I add more orange, orange? Is it too faded in the front, in the foreground? You can try. I don't know if you can. Uh, the, only, the only way you could get a little bit more orange, and you might even want to try doing this, is plopping some little whites down once in a while. Because, you know, once you get them this... Once you get this dark, it's kind of yeah. hard to get to get it back to a bright orange again. So, but yeah. if you come back with a little white once in a while here and there, just dry brush it in, let it yeah. dry, and then glaze. Yeah, okay. glaze in a little orange on top of it. You might get some of those bright ones back in. Okay, so that can be fun. Feel free to use as much as much uh, orange, uh, as much white as you want. Okay. You have my permission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But just, just do it. I mean, really. You get used to it, and then you learn how to use it sparingly so you don't kill all the luminosity in a piece. Right, right. You know, well, I really you enjoyed your practice one uh, where we did the first kind of very quick thing. That was really very uh, helpful. Thank you. You know, another thing is, is, you know, we don't always have to work in watercolor. I do have gouache here. I could do a gouache painting for you and show you how how much like a watercolor it is. Um, so that might be something we want to concentrate on in the future. We'll, we'll see. Okay. All right. Is Thank you. Bottom of the mountain is is it a part of the mountain or or a body of water? Alice. Uh, I'm sorry. Where? Uh, uh, the the bottom of the mountain. Here. Oh, I think it's different. This is different. Is this the one? Yeah. We are looking at a different one. Uh, Rob put a big white splotch across it. Oh, oh yeah, that's... Oh, that was me. Oh, that's Bob did. <laughs> uh, the Rob yeah. did. That was Rob. <laughs> that was it looks know. like a body of water, and it, it, I thought <laughs> it's kind of nice. It, uh, no, it was... It was just another, you know, brilliant move. Uh. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice atmosphere right away. You see what she's doing back here, you guys, with the atmosphere? Mm -hmm. Nice. See how? Oh, gosh, that's me. Like the clouds. Oh. From here to here. All of this. From one, two, three, four. She gets all that. And that's why these feel so... These guys up here feel so um, <clears throat> saturated because they're so gray. Your, your clouds are very nice, by the way. Wow. Well, thanks. Those were just, um, I did like wet on, I mean, I, I wet the, I wet the, that area first with water and then I went, dropped the blue in and then I got the paper towel and just blotted it. Paper towel works every time. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to have to talk paper towels. Okay, you got your Viva towels. <laughs> you got your brawny. No. 
I mean, really, we ought to we ought to have paper towel painting. Um, oh, that would be fun. <laughs> you know, I ought to have a paper towel painting demo for you. You can do a lot with a paper towel. I mean, oh my gosh, I'm giving all my best secrets away. Jeez. Okay. Um, I know I didn't get very I didn't get a chance to get in the darks under the poppies. Well, they, I tried to, but then they they lightened up. So I you, know, to, you know what might help a lot of your foreground up in here. Uh huh. Because, um, if you hit some more yellow in it, okay. Um, let me see if I can. I don't know if I can quite get it, but um, yeah. If you were to hit some more yellows in your greens, that would push them forward. So not okay. back here. Leave this like it is, okay? Okay. But up here, hit some more yellows in your greens, and hit some more yellows, yellows in your poppies. Okay. It won't show up very much, but it will punch it forward a little bit more. Okay. So. All right. Are, just like glaze yellow, is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, okay. just glaze the yellow in, yeah. Okay. So I might, I might actually take this orange right out of the piece, right here. I might just take it kind of oh. out. You know what? I started on 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 my piece that I have, you know, before I took or after I took the picture, I started scrubbing scrubbing that area out because I I thought, "Oh, it's kind of weird. It should just go off." So that's what I've been trying to do, is scrub it out <laughs> to take it you, out. You see how this one stops right here? Yeah. Yeah. Stop. I would take that more clearly out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, more clearly out. Okay. Got Pretty it. simple. Okay. Yeah. And then now, I know they, they do, these forms will look a little contained yeah, until you kind of weird. break in, looks break weird. in a few, uh, <laughs> you know, your green little things, your little green oh. areas here and there. Just, just, okay. um, just break them up a little yeah. bit. Okay. Little, little breaks here and there. You could even do the same with the, um, with the poppies. You, you could use a little white with your poppies and bring a couple of little choice poppies out into the green here. Once okay. in a while, okay. Here and there, something to play with. Mm -hmm. All in all, very nice painting though. Your colors and values, your groupings, all your your rules are this there. It's it's edges now. It's really edges. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Think edges like this. Uh, this edge right here is a little hard. Yeah. A little bit hard, right? Right in there. So. Yep. Okay. Right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Beautiful. This is a landscape right here. It looks like a, like right there. Uh, it's all, all its own. All by itself. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Suzanne. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Really? Hey, hey. You there, Suzanne? I am. I just unmuted myself. <laughs> Su Suzanne's not there. I am. There you I are. Am. We got. Are you muted? I unmuted. I thought. All right. You got now. The the question earlier from Henry was, uh, should these be above the horizon line? I may. I pulled mine up above the horizon line because my perspective is a little different than yours. You're doing I, very close to the same perspective that's in that um, one seventy nine, and uh, that looks great. See how there the how the top is below the horizon yeah, there. So, in all truth, if you look at it, I'd have to look at it again. But um, it might be going either level or uphill on the tops of these. We'll see. Okay. But pay attention to that because uh, if they're below the horizon, then the tops will be going uphill a little bit. Got it. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to break that photo out and really get in there. Okay, nice. You got a lot of good, a lot of good bones here. Look, look, look at the um. Did you use some white in your clouds over here? No. No. Wow, the, the clouds look very atmospheric. How did you do those? Just wet into wet, or? Uh, so the 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 clouds were wet into wet. I did use the white for the mountains because my background Mount Gregorio looked a little too dark compared to the yeah, mountain I see, in front. I can see some little so, white in there. That's nice. Yeah, so I used white for them. I had to use white for the mountains to lessen the contrast of those. But the clouds were just blotting with a I use a tea towel instead of paper towels for conservation, but 
Oh, okay. And that's pretty absorbent, the tea towel. You know what really worked for you? Look at this. You have this, um, you have this, this tree mass here. This, and then you have another really faint tree mass back here. And I think you got yeah. that by glazing the white over it, right? No, that was that, my that, gave original, you a, that was my original horizon line where I just wanted trees and then they were faint. So then I had to add the other trees in front because they were too faint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this this might be a little dark though, right here. Okay. Yeah. If I were you, okay. I'm not you, but if I were you, <laughs> um, no, I would put a, just a little touch. Of white here and very little okay just enough to knock it back a touch and the white's really weird to work with because you got to wait for it to dry to even see what you get right right but, um, a little bit more so because this dark is almost as dark as this dark yeah very competitive uh -huh. and I, I think if you if you just a little bit more back there and I think you get a touch more distance out of this it's looking okay. real good but you know let's try advancing it Okay. Push, pushing it to the next level. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great um, atmosphere, Susan. Oh, I love those. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is another one of those things. Can you see my mouse on here? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So yes. this right here is another one of those things where do you, do you take it out of the piece or do you put it in? Now, I can see that you have all these white marks here, which tells me that maybe you're going to crop it in more. I don't know. But um i i would tend to take this right out of the piece because it's so close to the edge i wouldn't uh -huh. want to uh, i wouldn't want to see shape right on the edge of the piece right so that's it. one of those things where i might take it straight out just just take it straight out you'll still get the idea of it coming back into the piece it'll work okay um i know all these things i'm saying are really small and but they do yeah, make, no, a, they make really subtle differences now, Thank you. it just goes to show that you're advancing because uh, I, I remember I used to say a lot of major things. And now I'm saying all these minor things. <laughs> See, I put that white along the back. See what it did? Yeah. I wouldn't go that white, but I mean, whoops. I wouldn't go that white, but I would, I would lighten that up a bit, bit back there. Okay. Okay. Now, here's another trick. You, those of you that have pinned me with me plain air know I, you'll know what trick I'm talking about here. Smack, <laughs> smack. This is for you, Lynn. <laughs> I see. <laughs> smack something right here. I love it. <laughs> not, not of course that dark, but what's happening is that some of your values here are beginning to look part of the foreground here. Uh huh. And even though they're ten miles away from each other or whatever, so. What you do is you just reinforce, like see these values you got right there? Right. Those are maybe even a little bit darker. Just punch it a little bit right here along this, and it, and it, uh, forces, it forces this whole foreground hill in front of the background. Okay. Yeah. All right. You might even want to hit a couple more along here possibly, and, and with your light, with your, whoops, with your white, uh, maybe even a little bit more back here. I don't know. I just don't want those colors and values up here. I mean, I don't want these guys back there. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they're small things, but uh, they do, they make a ton of difference. You're at that level where we could just, we just want to, we just want to just kick it up to the next level, you know? Thank okay. you. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I would say just a couple more darks at the base of some of these foliages. Some of these foliage, little right. darks at the base. They need something dark under them to sit them down, like right in here, possibly. Okay. Yep. They're small. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay. Uh, now we're at we're at Ethel. Let's see. Oh, oh my gosh, Ethel, you. You rebel. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> I know. I decided to get cute. <laughs> That's cool. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, that's you, really cool. That's all. I like is. that. Thank you. <laughs> hey, now, you know. Splotchy. It needs separation somehow. Okay. okay. Well, you, you see how it's separating right here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we, maybe we need to do a little bit more of that. Um, and by the way, you have a big mass here. Were you trying to balance it out with a smaller mass over here? Yeah. See, that's all I care about. Oh, okay. All I care about is that you're doing that steel yard thing because eventually you're going to be able to know and control it the way you want. You just got to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Um, now, I will say that uh, these oranges back here are about the same orange as we have up here, and that's why you're getting a lot of, you know, you're getting a lot of this kind of thing fading back into the background. So, does anybody know what I do to solve that problem? Because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. See, I, I'm not afraid to let you know, and I don't. I just don't even. I don't know the answer to that question. No, no. Honestly, see what you're getting here is. Um, here's what I, I love to do. This little trick, too. It, it's another little trick, and you're doing it. I just want you to do it more. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get up close here. What you've got here is a line. Now I don't know if you've actually put that line in, or it's just it's just a result of what happened when you put these two colors on each other. But you're getting a kind of a really intuitive line going on around. And what you can do, you don't have to do it everywhere. See this, this plant is separating just fine. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while. You come back in and you tag a little line. Well, you need a little separation. You tag a little line in there. Or, or what you can do is let's say we need a little green back here. Let's say we say you know punch a little green back here. That'll separate it too. A little a little more color differentiation. Yeah, that's I was thinking a little more green or darker green or something. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I have I don't I don't for, I got for contrast, that. right? For contrast yeah. so that it will pop it yeah so yeah to pull it forward yeah did you just say pop did you just, <laughs> just say pop the pop did i say that <laughs> did i say did. Oh, gosh. <laughs> see how subliminal this class is oh my gosh <laughs> absolutely unbelievable um no i mean you know yeah lacing a few little greens through let them neander through your piece they don't have to be all perfect but you can use greens to separate this a little too. Just remember, um, value separates things like it is here, mm -hmm. but so does color. And maybe we have too many of the same colors and maybe what we need is just something a little bit, like I would reinforce the bluer type green in there. Mm -hmm. you know, a little, little blue, blue green in there might pop the poppy a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That wasn't a joke in that in that sense. <laughs> that wasn't I didn't really mean it. <laughs> a little alliteration going on. Uh, alliteration. Well, I haven't heard that word since college. <laughs> so, Rob, you're thinking blue green because because the poppy is orange, so you're going for contrast. Is that what you're thinking? So, if yep. it was okay. Yeah, a bluer a bluer green. Yeah. So, right. if I were to come over this, the compliment. Let's say. Let's say I got a green back here. Let's say I glazed the green back there and then I glazed a little blue on it. There's another way to do it. You could just kind of do that idea. Mm, yeah. that, that really gets it to jump. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't even have to go this dark in value. I think the color alone will do it. So color differentiation will, will, um, will do it too. Now about these two, blo these two blots you got right here in the sky, what's the story behind those? Oh, those are splatters. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Did you do those Whoop. with a toothbrush? <laughs> oh, they just happened. <laughs> oh, I'll do that next week. It's all next week. We're going to do glitter, paper towels, and toothbrush paintings. Okay. Yeah. Splatter painting, yes. Maybe those are UFOs. Uh, yeah, that's what they are. <laughs> Knew it. Oh dear. No, I, I I know I get UFOs in every painting. I don't know why. I, I, I always <laughs> Since, think since the humans aren't walking around, you know, they probably figure, hey, we can check things out a little bit better now. <laughs> I don't know. That was, 
<laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I think this, your hill back here could use a little bit of white. Okay. Maybe, maybe a little bit of white on this hill back here. Oh. Maybe a little. I mean, it, it's pretty dark. Huh, yeah. Along the edge. Now, you could also just blot that. Get a little water on there and blot that, or you could try some white. Try some white. Did you even use any white? No. Oh, okay. The white is whatever the paper was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those are some ideas. Yeah, I think I'd really reinforce the greens in here. I think that's the issue. Besides that, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Love these. Now, one thing, and just really quick, this is small, but you'll hear me say this a lot. Um, I would take these right out, right out. Mm -hmm. right out. Yeah, I did kind of keep them in, didn't I? Oh, well. Just a couple here and there, just right out. Just just crop them right out, you know, just so um, you get a little cropping in. That's all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every once in a while, it's good to see one come from beyond, you know, in back of the page or something. Who knows, you know? You, you could get a little of that action, too. It could happen. So okay. those are small things, but they help. All right. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, that's all. Okay, and we're off to, okay, Henry, let's see what the right one is. We got number one. Hey, hey. hey oh, that's, uh, Henry, are you there? Yeah. No, that's my exercise, can you? Uh, yeah, that's your exercise, okay. Wow. That's your, <laughs> is this your other warm up? That's the arches paper, Ooh. yeah. Oh, you did arches and the rice paper? Oh, yeah, there you go, okay. <laughs> I, I had the student uh, paper and the arches. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I kept working on that student piece now. I mean, the uh, yeah. warm-up one. Now. So this one is the, the one I, I, I would Love like it. to get, yeah. Uh, look at his mountains, you guys. Love it. I know. See how oh lost? Gosh, beautiful. Lost and found. Uh -huh. wow. Henry knows how to. He Henry does this in his sleep. Okay, oh, because <laughs> this, is, this is Sumi painting right here. Yeah. So that's just right out of the Sumi handbook. I mean, look at that. Look at look how gorgeous that is. You got a found edge there. You got a lost edge there. Look at that. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right out of the. So atmospheric, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that is that. That's really. I, I wouldn't touch a thing on that. Um, uh, I I did see now. I think maybe this tree line right here could be a little lighter. Uh huh. And I I might now. Yeah, I might use a little bit of um, just a little glaze, not that light, but a little bit lighter. Like maybe. You know, because I don't want these. I don't want the dark to compete with these in the foreground too much. Oh uh, yeah. Just a little bit, mm -hmm. no big deal. Yeah, I like your uh, <laughs> your uh, friendly poles right here. They're cool. Thank you. <laughs> Good character. Uh, again, look at this hillside right here, you guys. I, I, I'm not saying you should lighten that one, by the way. Uh, let me get black here. See how he used the dry brushing right here? That's just a great, a great way to handle things. It's just fantastic. Um, no, nothing to say about that. It's just beautiful. Thank just you. beautiful. Um, let's see now. Yeah, now, I guess if, if our horizon line, let's do this. I got the right things here. If we have a horizon line approximately, let's say here, Mm -hmm. Then, if the bottom of this is there, it'll meet somewhere on there, around there. And if the top is there, and they'll fall into a line like that. Even though they're kind of meandering, they'll fall into a line about like that. Mm -hmm. Just just to show you, you know. The perspective. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily put them in a straight line or anything, but because uh, I like how yours are a little quirky, because they, they're like that out there. The, those old poles they bend and weave and they get messed up by the wind and everything. So um, 
but yeah, it generally, if that's the spacing there, then it would be something like a little bit less, a little bit less, and less, and less, and less. Yeah, that's, that's sort of the idea. Okay. Yeah. I know. Once you throw something man-made in there, I don't even know. That's why I'm always, I'm always kind of a, apprehensive about using uh, something synthetic in a, in a little nature painting. You have such a way with nature, it's just un, unreal. Yeah, we call that socialist realism, by the way. Socialist what? Why? why? Realism. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's like a, um, propaganda. When I was young, they, uh, we have to put uh, those uh, modernism, you know, sim symbolism of uh, modernity in in the uh, uh, landscape to, to um, you know, yeah. indicate the progress of uh -huh. the country. Right, right, right. So they'll sneak little pieces of modern entity in there? Yeah, just, to, uh, just like the bridges or, or yeah. uh, um, electric towers. Um, that's when I started. I, I, um, was oh. trained to do this kind of, uh, but we, we learned a great deal of uh, perspective from. Yeah. The, yeah, I remember yeah. you showed me one of your first paintings. It has a lot of, uh, you put architecture in there and stuff. Yeah, 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 bridge and uh, towers, or something like that, yeah. Where was this, Henry? Oh, I was in uh, China when I was a, uh, a teenager. Uh-huh. <laughs> where, where in the, China? Yeah, where? during the, the Cultural Revolution. Oh. Um, yeah, they, hey, what, they don't uh, allow us to do the traditional uh, growth kind of landscape. We everybody is going to to paint the uh, countryside, or you know, just uh, what um, what we see in the real world. Yeah. Hey Henry, where where did you live? What was the name of the village? Um, I live in the big. City actually called Nan Nanjing uh, in near Shanghai actually. Yeah. Oh, Shanghai, huh? <laughs> near the Yangtze River. Yeah. Oh, the Yangtze River, huh? Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's a. Isn't that that big gigantic river? Yeah, there's a big uh, bridge. That's what uh, I was. Uh, um, oh. You know, yeah, I, I painted that bridge, then I got into a provincial uh, youth painting competition, and then yeah. I won uh, something like a first prize. You know, they put it in the newspaper. So I got really, in, in that, that makes me you know, in, uh, a famous uh, uh, artist Jeez. in the school. <laughs> wow, awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm very, yeah, my, my parents are still wow. very proud. So he, they've kept the newspaper for like decades and then brought to me, to, I still have that newspaper. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Yes. Yeah, I will show you, uh, and I can share on this one, but uh, maybe later, yeah. Hey, by the way, I love your blue, uh, your blue signature down there. Oh yeah, I'll try to create the contrast with the orange. Yeah. That's the way. It looks like you wrote H two O. Yeah. Oh, H two O, right? That's uh, what it looks like. Uh, yeah. My initial X. Uh, I mean L. H. And twenty. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, H two O, right? Yeah. Watercolor. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing with you. Well, I mean, I I don't know what to say about this area. I mean, um. By the way, this area right here is all good. Just joking. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just really, look, you guys, this is really, you know, just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, Henry, did you use white in the background where the mountains are? Uh, you mean the remote mountains? Back here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I did have the... Uh, Cobine, uh, lavender, I think, uh, or horizon blue. It has squash in it. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. He used, uh, pure yeah, white. Henry's not afraid to use um, watercolors. Yeah. Which is awesome, right? Because all these watercolors, all these watercolor people, um, they think they're so pure, right? And then you have like Chinese who have been doing this thousands of years <laughs> before them, you know, before the English came up with all these little rules, right? And they have no problem throwing opaque colors in there at all. So, I mean, come on. I think they're a little crazy with all the opaque colors. <clears throat> yeah, but very diluted. So it's a semi, semi translucent, uh, or opaque. There sure is a right way and a wrong way to do it. I mean, if you you don't want to kill the painting by throwing in all this white, but at the same time, I wouldn't feel apprehensive about using it either. Yeah, yeah I have the okay. uh, yellow also with yeah. the gouache in it too, yeah. Oh, the yellow, yeah, I can see a little opacity in there, yeah. yeah some, you know, sometimes like a lemon yellow is already very opaque and it'll do the same thing. It's mm -hmm. just weird. Do you, All right. do you start by doing like a, a wet on wet for the orange flowers and then go in with a dry brush for the green? Yeah, I, I just follow exactly what uh, Robert did. Um, I have a video showing the entire process. I will upload it to YouTube. Um, yeah, I have some fellow yeah. artists following me here really in my own uh, Zoom also. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll, yeah. I'll upload it to You've my got to channel. see his stuff. I'll, I'll uh, maybe I'll throw that on. The, maybe I'll throw that on the email. Let me put that. Uh, I'll put Henry's uh, a link. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll send everybody a link later. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Henry. Okay. Thank Thank you. You. All right. Let's move it along here. Beautiful, huh? Henry. We still yeah. got a lot of people here. Okay. Uh, it's cool. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Beautiful. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Just uh, let let the drip let it drip. <laughs> let it drip. I like the wow. It's more like let it rip. <laughs> yeah. So each time it drips, a different it it becomes totally different. Uh, so it's yep. no end. You can you can do forever. Did you so now, turn your paper to get it to go the direction you yeah, want? Yeah, turn the paper oh. yeah, sideways. But not sideways, the other or, one. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's cool. very marbly. It looks like marble. Yeah. So cool. Well, you know what you're what you're really saying there is because you know what marble marble is caused by the, the marbling, you know, is caused by a very natural process. Um, and and you're seeing the the flow of nature in her piece. She's she's yeah. really, really, really good at at being at one with the flow of nature. I mean, look, look, this is really uh, like representational abstraction. I mean, I can feel all the mountain and and the foreground mountain in front of it. And then, you know, as we come forward, the poppies, but it's, it's a much, it's a much more, um, you know, natural interpretation. And, and, uh, Gorgeous. Believe me, there's a big market for the. I don't know. I don't know if you care or not, but uh, there is a big market for representational abstraction. So you know. Gorgeous. Love it. You know, haven't you ever just looked at drips and washes and? I don't know. I I grew up looking at stuff like that. I, mean, I would look at a little coffee drip on the side and go, "Wow, that's pretty cool." <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I used a coffee one time. And yeah. It's a nice brown kind yeah. of coffee brown. Yeah, that, that's part of the initiation. You, you have to do coffee paintings. It's important. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually you'll cut yourself and you got to use your own blood. Oh. <laughs> I'm curious, what kind of paper? Is it a hot press or is it? This is a, again, this is mineral. Mineral, mineral paper. Okay. Yeah, this is very sliding. It's almost like it, it just slide on the surface. Can, yeah. can you wash it off? I just like that you you go paper or whatever. <laughs> could could yeah, you? I, I think it's easier than you uh, well, well, it's not a paper, right? It's called mineral paper. Mineral paper. Oh, yeah, okay. mineral paper. So with cold press, do the same cold press paper. 
hot press. Maybe hot I mean, press. Hot, is that hot press? I, can, <laughs> the hot I can't press. Sure whether it's hot press or... I think it's a Japanese paper. It's a Yoshimoto or something. Yoshimoto mineral paper. Oh. Um, you can get like uh, Amazon. Oh, mineral paper. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. And look, look at what she gets here. After it dries, see this little ring around the shape? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. That's what happens on a hot press paper. You'll get that. Yeah, hot line. You, you can get it on our kind of paper, but not as, it's not as, not as much. Um, you'll get these, I call them puddle marks. You get mm -hmm. the ring around the outside and mm -hmm. um, it almost makes a line, right? Yeah. And what it does is it takes this, it takes the negative shape you got here and really emphasizes it. So, yeah, I used to do that in my paintings on purpose. I mean, I I would like live for these things. But you have to paint it in, uh, in level the position, like flat. Yep. Yeah, like you see the blue back here. Yeah. I can see it there. I can see it there. So it looks like you did that first, let it dry, and then came over it with this yellow. Yellow. You want. Uh, Very nice. It's a yeah, it's very very traditional in Japan. Yeah. Oh, really? Stripping technique. Yeah. All kinds of beautiful negative and positive shapes she's getting at just by being at one with nature. I mean, um, yes, I, I yes, uh, you you're right. I want to express like sky, mountain, ground are the same. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. We we have a term called the marble landscape, like a marble pattern on natural marble stones. Like marble landscape? Wow. Yeah, we, we, we can, you know, use the piece of natural marble and then frame it. Uh sometimes in a uh embed on a chair. You know. Wow. That's called marble landscape, yeah. It's something like like this. We have some picture stone too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same thing. Yeah. I I have a piece. You know, I have a little. Yeah. I wish you could. My I don't have a video today. I have it here. I will show you on my one my YouTube later. This is a marble stone. Okay. Um. Be beautiful job. I I. I don't know what you could do to improve this. <laughs> I would do more. <laughs> I mean, I would do it more, you know. You don't have very much, you know, representation in here and I don't think it needs it. It's not trying to be that. So I I think it's doing its job just fine. It really feels very natural. Oh, okay. Just, Thank you so much. Sure. More. The mm. the other one is uh if you could just take a look oh, yeah. at uh Oh, I didn't see. That. I was doing uh, with the with uh, oh, uh, demo demoing when you're demo doing a demo. Yeah, I'm doing that. Right. So this this has a lot of the rules in it. Yeah. Um, and but still, you're getting this puddle effect. Yeah, because it's so a. Th this is what I used to do quite a bit when I was wow. when I I do people's portraits like this. So I have very realistic <laughs> effects. I'd have very realistic effects and then very, I'd try to get as much of this sort of puddle effect as I could, just reinforcing the fact that, hey, you know, I am painting here, it's a painting. I'm not just copying someone's face, you know? So there's, there's the issue of the rendering and then there's the issue of the beauty of the paint itself. So yeah, you got a really nice little bloom going right there. Nice. It almost looks like batik. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the only thing I and I don't want to get into critiquing too many paintings at once here, but um, uh, I might put a little bit of something light at the base of this hill. Cause, Cause some of these darks, well, I might lighten up some of these darks like up here. Uh huh. Some of these dark kids, I don't want them to compete with things up in the foreground too much. Just a little lighter back here. And now it now almost becomes 
the same as the background mountain. So you want it a little bit darker than this background mountain here, but not quite this dark. Uh -huh. Or, or it, it, it ruins the atmosphere, that's all. I see. And that, that's really easy, you know, you, you could either take that up or you could add a little white, whatever you like. The, the, the technique you use to achieve that is up to you. All I'm saying is that, you know, in value, in value, I think it could be a little bit lighter, that's all. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. That one too, yeah. right? That one on the left. I, I just love, I love the natural watercolor effects here. You really got it. You really got it going on. Okay. Mick, see, uh, is, it, is that wet on wet? When you do it on that mineral paper, is it wet on wet? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, is this your study, or is this Shelly? Is this? What, I know you got two here, right? Yeah, that was my oh, study. Mm -hmm. oh, beautiful. So there, there's a comp. I love your study. Color comp, nice color comp. You know what really makes this color comp is, um, and I won't spend too much time on this, but um, these sneaky little grays you got in here. Yeah. Little blue grays, they really are working for you. <clears throat> they're they're a nice complement to the saturation. You got the saturated color here, and you got the sneaky little gray in there. I call it sneaky because um, <clears throat> because you you should know that uh, grays will give life to your saturated colors. So uh, nice. Yeah, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, try try a sneaky little gray once in a while ne next to a saturated color and see what happens. Because sometimes when saturated colors are next to saturated colors, they lose their they lose their oomph. You know, mm -hmm. that's why I think that's what you're doing here with some of these little lavenders mm -hmm. are actually. You know, <clears throat> when you put a lavender next to a yellow. <laughs> You get uh, you get something called optical mixing. Yes. Um, right. So if you ever looked at a um, like a, a Surat painting, they will have all the dots, yeah. and he'll have like very pure colors next to each other. But when you get back, they mix together, and you get little grays that happen. Well, you're doing a little bit of that optical mixing up here, which is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and and you're getting that by by putting a lavender. Right next to that, you're getting the gray, and then some. I noticed it, it is mixing in, and you are getting some nice grays. Um, you know, this is almost representational abstraction too. Um, gosh, a lot of things here. Now, are you throwing these lines in the back? These little guys back here. Are you throwing those lines back there just to uh, separate things, or? Uh, no, I was just trying to get it to go. Uh, just blend it going back. Maybe they're a little too strong. I don't know, but um, yeah, yeah. I think I'd lighten them up just a little bit. Okay, great. Yeah, maybe. Let me see. That's a little too saturated, but it's just a little lighter. Let's see, maybe I don't know if white will do it. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah. Besides, I mean, I I see now. I can't be, I'm, I can't be too over, see, because right here it works really well. You've got these really sensitive little lines. Maybe these are a little heavy handed. I would try to keep them more like that. Really, really light and, and really light. And I, I just, I really like the way you swish the things together here. It just, it just flows. Look at that. It just flows. And you can feel your shapes. They're really close together back here. And then they get bigger. And they get bigger and you can see more across them as you get more into the foreground. So It's a very flat place. Now I would overlap a couple of these. Okay. Very flat place? Yes, it's a very flat place. I would take... A <laughs> now I, I would take a few of these um poppies and overlap a few okay you know yeah here and there 
just so you don't have one, you know, one, two, three. Okay, great. Just, to, just here and there. Every once in a while, I'll have one all by itself, but not, not very often. Just some overlaps, some groupings. Um, yeah, if you're going to put in more detail in your poppies, I, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't touch this area except for those lines. Everything else is just awesome. Just awesome back there. Um, yeah, I would, if you're going to put in any detail or like you said, if you wanted to break it up with some greens or something else, um, I would save it for below this line. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Above that line is, I mean, literally a, a painting all in itself. But yeah, if you do want to put in some detail, I would, I would save it for here possibly. Yeah. Okay. Great color. Your color is slamming. It's just beautiful. Thank you very much, Rob. Again, the, the lesson to be learned on this painting, you guys, is the way she's using grays, they're giving life to all her saturations. Look at that. Great. Great grays. Okay. Thank you very much. Gorgeous. Beautiful Gorgeous. Beautiful dogs. Hey. Hey, Rob. Hey. I picked at it for a while. Hey, Rob, can we do the one I just sent you? I picked at it for a little bit. Oh. Maybe one on the top there. All right. I got a lot to do here. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, you sent me like 20 of them. Sorry, oh. just use four, number four. I didn't know if they went through or not. I thought you meant just use, just use all four of them. No big deal. Oh, no. <laughs> just use the one that says number four. Yeah, I, I'm I'm running late on these crits here. Let's see. Um, hey, wow, nice color. Look at you all experimenting with the color. Ooh. Wow. And then you you got your little pathway off here to the side. Mm -hmm. Um, be careful of of putting stuff too close to the edge. You know, we we begin to get that tangent thing going on there. You're not too bad, but be careful. And I think that if you have a little bit more space off to the side, I, I, I would definitely play to the outside of this, so you don't get you don't you don't get that too close to the edge. But I like yeah, yeah. I like your little road going off into the horizon. Yeah, there certainly could be a hill there, and that that happens all the time. Um, you might see another little hill off into the background, and but generally the uh, the horizon is around here. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so uh, let's see. So yeah, if we're on that, if well, yeah, you are right. Yeah, where could that be? Maybe a little bit smaller as it goes downhill. A little bit smaller. <laughs> Closer together, closer together, a little closer together, maybe a little higher than that. Now it depends. On our horizon is here. I don't. I don't know. If, well, according to this one, this is right on the horizon. So, but now the problem is, is that these are going downhill, so this will be a little lower. You have to play with that. There is definitely a perspective lesson in this, and I don't have time to give it, but. <laughs> Because you know, if if you have a hill, then you have another you have another vanishing point. So, yeah. But uh, I can just look at some pictures and see how that looks and and draw some lines. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I don't the way you've painted this though. I don't think you need to be too perfect about it or anything. Okay. I mean, you wouldn't want to treat that all perfect and then not have all this be all perfect, or it just would look weird. I would treat yeah. it, you know. Very much the way you are is just fine. I just wanted to let you know there was a little bit of perspective in there. Exactly. And you got, you got, you decided to put the people in there. Great. And remember, people are a lot like poppies. <laughs> no. um, in the sense that, uh, well, what will happen is you'll have little groupings once in a while. You'll have a grouping, and then you'll have a person all by themselves over here, and then you might have a another little grouping. So uh, think when you're doing groupings, 
think uh, threes and fives. Okay. Do the grouping, yeah. And they don't have to be any big deal or anything, but, but when you have people all by themselves, you know, um, it, you need, you know, you need little conversations and things going on once in a while, you know. Just things closer together. It's just a very natural thing to uh, space things almost, almost equidistant from here to here. Six Be feet, careful. at least six feet apart, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, that's funny. That's too funny. So just be careful. And then occasionally you just want a little overlapping. Think threes and fives. That's all. Um, you got a really nice looking atmosphere back there. That's really nice. Back here too. Really, really nice. Did you see the clever little thing she's doing here with the line too? Little, little tickly little line in there. It just tickles the surface. Little broken line. That is just beautiful. Separating. Just separating the two values. Yep. Those are Colorado mountains, though. Uh, yeah. We will be very well, Mel. Be. <laughs> <laughs> they're great. Yeah, they're they're a little more uh, a little more dramatic. It looks like yeah, love, love the color, love the variation in color in here. Great, definitely. Um, yeah, and then are you using a little oil pastel? Uh, no new pastel on top. Oh, I, you can always tell when I don't like my watercolors because you'll I'll be doing other oh. stuff to it. <laughs> I might punch some oranges up here in the foreground a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yellows, yellows and oranges. Yeah. yeah, leave them here and then yeah, definitely gray them as they get back here. You, you certainly wouldn't want these as saturated as these. But yeah, you know, actually, what I was trying to do with those new pastels is kind of rub them into the watercolor, so they yeah. kind of rather, you know, they blend into that that underneath color. But yeah. you know, whether or not that happened, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I call that smushing. Smushing, yeah, that's a, that technical term. Yeah, yeah, just come to me for the technical terms. Okay, uh, beautiful. Nice. I really like how you went blue in the background and then reinforced your warms in the foreground. That always works. But look, look at this. She has some. She has some of the warms. She has warms on her mountain back there. But see, they don't compete with anything up here or anything up here. They've got enough atmosphere in them to where they don't compete. So, very nice. Okay. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, now we're on. Oh, we're all the way. A lot of people sent me a whole bunch, right? I think we're on Michelle. We should, oh, no, we're on uh, Marie. Hello. Hi. Marie, are you there? There. Okay. Is this the one you get in a half an hour? Yeah. Cool. Very nice. Well, it was uh, fast. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, as you can see, you get a lot more intuitive things happening. You know, like, see this watermark you got here? Little bloom you got there? Right. That happens by going fast. Um, you know, I remember being in classes and um, I'd have teachers say, this is very good. Do more. I need you to do another one. Okay, now do another one. Now do another one. And they'd have me doing pieces that it used to take me two hours and I would be doing them in 15 minutes just because there was no time to think. They just wanted me to get into that, that intuitive part of my brain. Right. Because once you're there, you realize, you know, the rules are only there. The rules are only there to help you when you need help. Otherwise, let them go, you know. And um, see, I'm seeing lots of good perspective back here. Look, look at, see the way your land's laying down? Really nice and flat. Then as you get toward the foreground, you know, their zigzagging's a little bit bigger. So um, that's good perspective. And you don't really need any more perspective than that in a piece like this. Okay. Sure. Now, I bet you, if, you know, if, 
if you guys did one or two more today, <laughs> but if you did, you would probably be really, really loose. I mean, so I got to tell you, sometimes I just don't even loosen up until my third painting. <laughs> um, happens all the time. You're better to just work faster in a, in a general way. I can see some, some little darky things possibly at the base here, but maybe you just didn't get to those yet. And that's usually the way a watercolor goes. I mean, usually do your darks last. Yeah, I kind of felt like uh, looking at it that it's lacking the darker values. Yeah. And you, you did manage to get some saturated marks here in the foreground, some nice, nice, uh, nicely saturated colors. But I could see possibly uh, smacking a little bit more saturation in the foreground here and there. Okay. Here and there, no big deal. And the technique doesn't matter to me. I mean, if, like I say, if you guys have gouache, go ahead. You can do this in gouache. Gouache over watercolor is awesome. But I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna do a gouache painting for you pretty soon, just to show you that you can use watercolor. I mean, you can use gouache exactly like watercolor. I could do a gouache painting. You would never even know it's not watercolor. Mm -hmm. uh, so can almost anybody that does gouache. You just get used to using it that way. It's really fun. Okay. Uh, your atmosphere back here is totally awesome. Thank you. Look at this. I mean, sky, mountain, and look, I mean, your your value right here is almost the same as your sky, but you went a little, you changed the color, and you went a little redder with the color, and then you held on to that line at the top, which totally made, that's enough to make it separate. So it's working for me. This is working. Um, you're wise enough not to get too dark with this background mountain because the problem is is that once you get dark with this, once you get too dark with this, then you got to get the next one really dark to get it to come forward. So it's better to keep those really light in the background the way you did. Thank you. Um, yep. Yeah, and these puddly edges are just fine. They're, they're hard edges, but what happens is if, you, I'm sorry, um, what happens is if you have a, like these hard edges that happen as a result of using, um, you know, real drippy paint. Uh, the thing is, is uh, they work if you do it all over the place, like you're doing here, like there and there and there. You're doing it all over the place, so it works. But if you did, you know, if you, if you did, uh, a softer technique was everything was blended and then you had a hard edge back there. I'd, I'd have to say, no, nah, it doesn't work, but it does work because you're doing it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's the way it works. Nice puddly edges here in the foreground. That's a good place to punch some color right there, by the way. It's in the real painting. It's a lot oranger. Yeah. Than what you're seeing. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, if you look at my painting up there, it's just so much better than what you see. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. The the color gets really drowned out on these. Yeah. They do. Like, I don't even have any light on mine. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, beautiful. I think that works just great. Let's move along here. Daniel. Whoa. <laughs> that's some saturated color. Yeah. No, I gotta unmute, unmute myself. You, you did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is this is a long crate. We must have had a lot of people today. <laughs> um, hey, hey, I mean, I'm starting to think in a few. Yeah. So, do you, do you think your blue back here is a little little dark? Maybe back here. Whoops. Sorry. Daniel's muted. Oh. Can you unmute yourself, Daniel? I thought I was says I muted. No, I'm you're here. unmuted now. I mean, you're, you're unmuted now. Yeah, it's interesting. I said I thought I was <laughs> muted. Okay. I would just um, lighten up a couple of these back here. Your your mountains back here are fantastic. These are great. I would just, I don't think you need this, this harsh of a jump. 
So you see how it is right here? This is about what I think that's about what you're going for. This right here is a little drastic. So you, as you can see, landscape, when you're talking about landscape that far away with that much atmosphere, I mean, the difference between this and this is like five miles, maybe, or maybe 2.5 miles. I'm just <laughs> Okay. Did I just make two eyes again? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that on your piece. I don't like to go on everybody's piece. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> But seriously, I would just lighten that up a little bit. All right. Now, we, we do get sort of biomorphic with some of these forms. And I noticed mine were doing the same thing. Um, and so what I would do here is just break a few of them up with some greens. Um, and I don't, by the way, I don't, if you like the biomorphic forms, just leave them. But, but. Uh, I could see breaking in a few little greens here and there, kind of zigzagging, just just breaking things up a touch here, maybe maybe through here. And they'll, you, you see how this one kind of goes around here and it stops right there. I would take this orange right out, right out of the piece right here. Just take it right out, right out. Um, yeah, I mean. This is just a, a, a good land, and now we just need to break, break up some forms. Think of these as like land masses, you know? They kind of look like, they do, and they'll, they'll look like land masses until you break them up a little bit. A little, little bit of greens in there, a little bit of shadows in there, things like that. Now, I would hit a little bit more saturated here, and then just keep it gray, keep it nice and gray back there. Here, just slam the saturation. You did, but if you'll notice, the, the, the more you go over it, the darker it gets. Yeah. This might be a little dark. Time to give it a wash. <laughs> yeah, but you know what would look good over that? Some orange gouache. Instead of using white, Ooh. I could show you how to do that, too. That, that's another way to do it. And no one would really even know. I mean... <laughs> But not only that, you're looking, you're looking to punch a little lighter or saturated color back in there, and gouache is the way to do it. Yeah. And by the way, you can get all kinds of natural effects with gouache. You can see how, you, see how it's running right here? You're getting that little bloom right in there. Um, you can get that thing going with gouache, too. It's, just, it's more opaque, but it still does the same thing. So, there's a lot, of, a lot of wonderful things about gouache. So it looks like you have some poppies going up the hill here. Yep. Yeah. No idea. This and got a little this, high on you, maybe. The other side got even higher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it, it looks like it's going over the hill a little high. So what you could do is just take your blue of the hill into here, possibly. It's not a big deal, really. But I mean, just a little bit more blue just to level it out a little bit. It's nice to, it's kind of neat to see um, the, um, the poppies, they get real skinny here and then they might get a little bit wider as they get, as they turn toward you. And then they might thin out again as they go down the hill. That's weird. It's something to study. It's really something to study and draw. Go out and just draw. How, how foliage will wrap itself around a hill and it turns down the face of the hill. And then mm. as it comes down the hill, it might run. So as it gets toward here, it might actually thicken up and then thin out again. All right. All right. But again, as usual, beautiful color. Your color always amazes me. All right, uh, Miles, a weak attempt. <laughs> oh, how's it going? Beautiful. It's going. Hey, did you throw in some white on there? Yes, I did. Love that figure. Uh, that's the only way I was going to make it look reasonable. <laughs> um, did, did, did you tear into the paper there? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you got a little too wet. No. 
it's been a, been a no. long time since I've done any like traditional painting. This was fun. Yeah, yeah, yep. You know, the principles are the same, but the technique, you know, techniques are a bit different. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I I don't really get to talk about ripped paper very much, but you might think that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And it is. It's a horrible thing. No, I'm just joking. You know. <laughs> no, honestly, uh, it, it's a great thing. You know, um, uh, in, especially in modern watercolor, when you really wanted to show off that process, you'll see a lot of artists, they just, they'll leave the ripped paper and that's, that's they're showing that part of their process. You know, they, they, um, <clears throat> they, that was part of the vigor well, of, you know, they're experimenting, they're lunch. learning, and that's just part of the process. Mm -hmm. Oh, so. okay. I'll jump off. So now, if you had a, um, now, if if your light is coming from here, then I might throw a little bit more shadow on her side over here. Okay. And a little bit more on the ground there. No. Not, obviously not that dramatic, but... Uh, um, and you know, I might even use like bluer colors. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna do. I kind of ran out of time though. Yeah, it's nice, nice, nice blue shadows. I yeah. think it would contrast the the orange pretty well too. Your your clouds are awesome, by the way. These are clouds are awesome. Thank I you. love these big big looming clouds. Um, yeah. now. What happens is that the blue of the sky, because she's wearing a white dress, the blue of the sky will hit her dress, and that's what makes it turn blue, especially on the planes that are facing upward, like here and here. That will get especially blue. But the white will turn blue in a, when you're having a blue sky day because uh, it's just reflect because the white doesn't have any color of its own. Mm -hmm. So now, if we're going to go that way with it, then why don't we even maybe take some of this orange and, and every plane that's facing yeah. downward might catch a little orange. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah. That's a fun idea. It does, look that for it. Are you using a photograph or did you just make her up? I just made her up. Yeah, um, you know, I, I might throw those things in just to mess around, you know, I mean, it, it's, play with those planes, it, it, uh, it works, it works every time. And those shadows on the mountain are really cool too. Yeah, you get this. Yeah. And you see, by the way, you, you see how he didn't just go wink with it? He sort yeah. of been, sort of goes, it wraps around, and it kind of, you know, you want it to flow down the mountain. I even like to crest the top like that. Just just turn it a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So if I were going to, like, I would do it, I would kind of go around and then down. And, but, um, yeah, I love those. This, this is a really – really great move one of my favorites too is to go out in big open areas and see how those clouds create little shadow patterns it's the best in the summer one of those giant cumulonimbus clouds i, I love those yeah they are phenomenal aren't they mm -hmm. nice. just be careful you don't make these two you know almost the same size oh yeah you're right you know what the, the real quick little easy thing to do on that is to take yourself a little floater a little floater here I, a little floater once in a while, oh, you know, okay. here and there, just kind of breaks all that up. Um, yeah, everybody does that. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I really love your uh, your greens. Yeah, they're a little light, but um, those might be the highlight on the green. And uh, what I especially like is these sort of semi-translucent blue. Those are pretty. Blue shadows you got going in there. Um, yeah, those are nice. <laughs> scared me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, oh, by the way, just one more thing and one more thing that was really clever that you did, and I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it. You, she took this shadow. Uh, yeah. Behind. Try to make the, the Look, white pop out. But here's what people will do with that. Here's the common mistake. People will take the shadow and they'll end it here. Right? They'll end it right there. What you did is you took it behind her like this. The follow through, you got the follow through. Now, 
it is almost lining up with her head there. So I might actually pull it behind, maybe up there, give her a little mm. bit more room. But okay. um, the follow through is what I'm looking for. That follow, always behind everything. Um, the follow through works. It gives you overlapping, which creates depth. So it works. Definitely a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Nice job. Thank you. Very cool. Yeah. And where are we? There's Miles. It's Hector. Ooh. Oh. Holy cow. Very, very rich and um, um, what's the word? I want to say handsome. It's a handsome painting. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why handsome comes to mind, but it's got those uh, mahogany looks to it, you know. <laughs> Hey, you know, mahogany is a handsome color. No. But seriously, folks. You there? Is uh, Hector there? Yes, I, I'm here. Yes. Uh, now, you hear me? Yes. Now, this almost reminds me of a color field painter, like a, uh, like a Rothko in a way. Thank because, you. <laughs> yeah, because look, look what he's doing. He, and this is a, a good way to look at a Rothko. I've always thought of Rothko as a, a landscape painter. And I don't, I've read that, he, you know, he, he did, he was inspired by landscapes, but uh, he's really not trying to do a landscape. But I always thought of, man, when I'm painting landscape, I feel like Rothko. I, I, I lay in paintings all the time and they, they look Rothko-esque. This is doing that too, because... What, what he's really doing as a color filled painter is he's deconstructing landscape painting. And, um, and he deconstructed it all the way to the abstraction. So now this has references to um, representational things. So I still think this falls under representational abstraction, but still. All right, now what I might do here is Whoops. I might lighten up the background a little bit. Okay. Not that light, but a little bit lighter. Um, now, if this were at sunset, you might get that kind of thing. But I don't, I don't know, but I, I think I would probably lighten that up a little bit. And... What do we have here, like a pather? Yeah, it was the, it's the first painting. It's the first yeah. photograph you have. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not looking at that, your uh, It was that road and the people there. You have more? Oh. It was the first, well. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I thought you meant you sent me more than one photograph. No, no, no. No, the first photograph is what I got it off of. That's what I was using. So there's that road, right? You got a road, you got some reference, yeah. people references, right? Yeah. Cool. That's right. You just let it all hang out. When you're, when you're doing abstraction uh, and you want and you want to be inspired by something, you want to use something as representation, um, um, just use it at will. The, uh, uh, did did you see the Rotoko? Watercolor. Yeah. No, did you think of uh, Rotoko when you are uh, doing this? Rotoko. Yeah, Rotoko. Oh. No, 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 no. So I think it's it's very eye-opening things Rob yeah. just mentioned. I never thought Rotoko is like landscape. But you looking, yeah. looking at your painting here, you know, like a, especially like a left part, it's, no. like, yeah. a, it's like a Rotoko. Yeah, it is. Uh, now I will, when I see Rotko, I will see that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, that, that's a really eye-opening uh, way of looking at his stuff. Well, I, I've always felt like a color field painter. You know, I mean, um, I, I choose to paint, I choose to represent things, but I still think in totally abstract terms. Yeah. So for me to jump from what I do to what Rothko does or any color field painter is it almost feels like just what I do all the time. I don't know. So I, 
well, when you look at a Rothko, it there's so much there. I mean, it's, you're you yes. can get lost in it just looking at it. Well, yeah. when color, then, when two colors okay. uh, overlaps, the more you look color. at it, the more you start seeing. Yeah, to, to me, it's just it's a it's a de you've deconstructed uh, the landscape to its most you know to its bones. Well. You know, I've been going to the poppy fields for years, and I yeah. was always so moved by it. It was just overwhelming. Uh, oh, great. The color is just, and I just let it rip. Yeah. But I felt. Oh, good for you. <laughs> and I did it, and I did it in a half an hour, because I was watching your demo the whole time, too, until you know uh but i i think you just take chances you know just go for it i just went for it do you and, uh you know when i when i was at art center i would just spend hours watching the teacher i love the teachers that demoed and we had other teachers that just talked but we had right. other teachers that just demoed and i didn't even want to paint i would just want to watch the demo all day long because I don't know why, just something about watching somebody else work, it just kind of, um, you I think up. you get so much out of it. Yeah, you, you get, get a lot. I think, well, we're visual. Yeah. We're so visual. And there's all these subconscious things you pick up too. Exactly. You just wonder, why exactly. are they doing, like, why is the teacher um, moving their brush around like this? Exactly. Why are they doing that before they make that mark? Why, what are they doing? And then you find oh, and, and, and then like what's tries at it before they make it? Oh, and and Rob, what's going to come next? How is yeah. it going to enhance that? And then he puts the little something, and you're going, wow, yeah, you know, and, yeah. And, and Rob, just looking at your demo this morning, just the idea of using patterns of the green and the poppies helped yeah. me formulate the way I was going to do the painting. Otherwise, I think I was just going to put paint down. Well, you know, that was, I did a sketch. That's what I did. The, the very first one, the tiny one that uh, Rob did. And, and from there, I already knew more or less where to put The orange and the green. That's it all it's for. Trying to mix up the color. Just trying to mix up that green because it was so different. That's all weeks in the day. Are just you know maybe you know in some twenty-five. Those were. Uh, oh, you mean it, it, it was it was acrylic ink. It was acrylic ink. Oh. Put yes. back in, yeah, with uh, a with a purple acrylic ink. I, I use the ink, my acrylic ink, to the minimum. Mm. Like, I, I usually use a lot more. And here I just barely put it on <coughs> for yeah. the road. And the white was way too white. So I went back in with purple and just hit it around while mm. it was still wet. And it gave me the right, uh, it wasn't too bright because it was set back. I don't know. I just like sitting here copying your marks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mark maker. <laughs> you made your mark today. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Great conversation too. Wow. Yeah. Always well, is with always, you. Though. Always with you. <laughs> Takes two. Takes two. <laughs> yeah. You're the best conversationalist in the world though. I mean, we be we'll be out painting and somebody comes up to you and suddenly I see you guys off talking and you're like I I talk to you later you you didn't know that person for like thirty years you just started talking to them oh my god so people just feel so comfortable with you I don't know what it is but you, you've got the well, best love, love people it's probably your years and years and years of exactly talking to women yeah but you gotta love it too I know no I do. Yeah. I do too. I love people. Well, okay, um, I'm not sh sure whether you, this is very different or not, but I sent you a number four. 
because I didn't know if they went through. I, so, I'm, I'm looking at the latest one. Just number three, I thought. Okay, where? Let's see. Um, number four, right there. This is the last one you sent me. Okay, perfect. Number Sorry. four. That, that's number four right there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You, you must have sent me, yeah, you, you sent me more than four, though. I think you sent well, me four. Just, but I'm so sorry, because I was still working on it, and I just sent more. <laughs> okay, well, look, look, you, you got a lot of distance here, from here to here, and then you, you threw in a little bit more saturation right there. So I am definitely getting the one, or I should say, the one, two, three. And that's what we want. I'm seeing the recession. If anything, um, I would probably maybe hit a touch of white in there. Okay. Just a little bit of white back there, possibly. And not as white as I just did it, but a little bit of white back there. Remember, we can hit a little bit of white at the base of these mountains, too, occasionally. But they're working. They're working the way they are, so. Um, it's kind of hard to talk over the music. Is that is that you, uh, Hector? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't turn it off. Sorry. See, this is what I'm looking for is right there. Just just a little bit more um, separation right, right through these two. Okay. That's a, a pretty light move, um, but I think it would work. Now, your clouds are just perfect. They're really great. You even got the little dust color in the air right here. You got a little yellow, <laughs> a little pink. Nice. That must really show up where you are because I'm barely seeing it, but I'm seeing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your, your clouds are just great. Um, right. Back here, these are fine. I think this dark's a little too dark right here. I would lighten that up a little bit. Yeah. Just, just uh, maybe even this too, a little bit. What you're looking for is a separation between this hill and this hill, but, and you're getting it from the green. The green is separating it, but this, so you probably don't need this to be that dark. Um, one of the keys to doing, to getting that progression in the darks here, is nail them nice and dark in the foreground and then progressively get lighter as you get back further away. I know usually uh, I start them off lighter in the background and work my way forward. You know, as long as you're getting darker in the foreground, just, just make sure that these darks back here aren't as dark as these darks up here. And we could be having a camera problem too, because sometimes the camera will read them both the same. So, um, so yeah. I'm looking for a little more saturation. I, I, it could be, it could be the photograph as well. I, I wouldn't mind a little more saturation here in the foreground. Um, and yeah. And then any sort of any sort of uh, shadow at the base of here. And when the shadow comes up onto the poppies, I would keep that shadow a little bit more on the um, the red orange side, like right up into there. So it goes from the orange of the poppy. Oh, I'll do it this way. Hard for me to change colors. Um, the orange from the poppy to the red orange of the shadow of the poppy, to the dark green of the shadow of the greenery. And then you got the light green out here, which, which I'm thinking maybe you could hit a little bit more yellowy green out here in the foreground. Okay, yeah. A little more yellows in your greens out there. Leave them, up, leave them back here. Don't, don't hit the yellow back here. Maybe a touch here, but smack them up in here. <laughs> okay. Smack them hard. You guys got to watch that get Jim Gaffigan. He's hilarious. Let's get cooking. That's what he does. <laughs> you got to watch it. 
Um, otherwise, I think you're doing great. Nice quality of this painting. All right. Baba, I don't like the shapes. I don't like the shapes of the poppies. Um, well, you know, okay. So maybe come in, maybe dry brush in a few more greens just to break this up. Okay. Break, break up this mass, Erin. A little bit more. Play with it a little bit. Give yourself a little time too. Um, look at the, maybe give yourself a break and then look at the photograph and then see the way that the poppies break up. You'll, you'll get little breaks of green in there. And then back here, they don't break up as much. They all, because you're looking over them more. So because they're further away, they clump together more. And you won't get as many breaks. You'll get a lot more breaks up here in the foreground. So. Okay, good. Oh, that looks like army green, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Camouflage. Okay, what do we got? There's Michelle. We got Mike. George, I had to leave. Oh, okay. Uh, Monica. Oh, that's someone else. <laughs> Is that everyone? I got everyone, right? Okay. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Can I show a picture of the easel that I built? Yeah, yeah, I do. Where is it? Um, let me just, can I just share my screen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get off mine here. Avenger. Movie came out. Go ahead. Music by Alan Silvestri. Hold on a second. Mad Pops, and that from an album called Superheroes, and that's also what we call our first responders. 